hello, hello, what's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Thursday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up, Zelda Zack, Dog of Myth? Good to see you, DMG, Jake, Ripped, Ring Chase. How is everyone doing tonight? And uh, tonight, not only is it Modern Night, it is Make Opponents Miserable in Modern Night. I, I thought this deck was dead. I really did. You might remember a few years ago, uh, Lantern Control with Lantern of Insight, one of the weirder decks to ever be good in the entire history of Magic, uh, suddenly became like a really good deck. And then almost as quickly, it disappeared. Well, now, thanks to Urza Saga, in part, it might be back. So we're going to try to just... <laughs> Make our opponents wish they did anything except play Magic tonight by not letting them draw any relevant cards, uh, hopefully getting some early concessions, so this should be interesting. We're going to grind them out and see what we can do. Uh, before we get to it, though, we got big news today. We got big, big news. Uh, of course, we got Secret Lair alert news. We got this second set of lands, the, oh, actually, they're not up on the, they're not up on the, the, the Secret Lair site yet, but even the bigger news is we got Pauper Bannings, and maybe even bigger than that, we know real... Uh, that was definitely not the word I wanted. Not real bannings, but bannings for non-pauper formats are also on the way coming on Thursday, which is kind of exciting. So in pauper, we got Atog ban, we got Bonders Ornament ban, we got Prophetic Prism ban. I haven't played pauper in quite a while. So if you played pauper, let me know what you think about this, because I'm curious. Arocalypse, and also the Uba Ninja. How are you today, Jim Owen? Welcome, you too. Big scoops here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They are all gone, all at the same time. Atog, Bonders Ornament, Prophetic Prison. So the theory, I think, is... Affinity was really good. Did I did I not say Thursday? I don't know my days half the time, but it is Thursday. Uh, Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we get bannings for non-popper format. So, four days, five days. Uh, so, the theory is, Affinity was too good. So, they ban Affinity stuff in ATOG, but then they were afraid that Tron would be too good with Affinity getting banned, so they banned some Tron stuff as well. Gonna be interesting to see what that means. Uh, maybe I will link the article right now. Ooh, we have a new donation from... Rum Pudida. $2 donation. I'm sorry I butchered your name. Hey, Seth, just wanted to say thank you for showing me Modern, which is now the format I play a lot. Oh, Modern's so good. Thank you for the donation, and uh, welcome to Modern. It is such a fun format to play. Uh, so, yeah, those are the pauper bannings. And then the big, big, big news is Tuesday, bannings in other formats. So my question for all of you is, uh, what do you want to see banned? What do you want to see on, uh, on Tuesday? So we don't really know what this means. From I couldn't catch the stream myself. From what people have told me, they made it sound like there could be bannings in multiple formats i think they said bannings in formats apparently uh coming on tuesday so what are you what are you rooting for what are you rooting for we know it's not pauper uh i assume that it's not just like rebalancings and alchemy or they wouldn't have pitched it as a as a ban list update saga that would definitely kill the deck we're playing tonight if saga got bad ragavan i mean in modern if if the changes are coming to modern i think it would be Ragavan, Saga, Luris, and then maybe Arion. I don't know. Luris, Luris is the biggest defender out of the companions. So I think those would be like the top tier. Not calling for them to be banned, but if they're going to ban something from the format, I think those would be the those would be the most likely options. I think uh, possibilities would be standard. Maybe they just finally ban Epiphany in standard. Maybe they do care about standard a little bit, and they're like, well, we get this new Kamigawa set coming out. No one likes standard because of Epiphany. So maybe we ban Epiphany, and then people can try out their new Kamigawa. Magawa cards, that would make some amount of sense. Any free spell being banned in modern would be fine with me as well. I think they're like further down the tier list behind like the Ragavans and the Sagas and the Lurises, but any any Manamorphoses or Bobbles, like I'd be fine with that. Although Luris causes a lot of those problems too. So I think if you get rid of Luris, then Bobbles probably like uh, much, much fairer. Rogers, the hype train is running. Ooh, and a bunch of gift subs from Seamstress. Handing them out to Parabex, JK, the Cardboard Samurai, Tap Wall, Racing clever side. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the big news. We can talk about it as we go along throughout the stream. Uh, new new lands coming in a secret lair. The next uh, astrology lands. Pauper bannings and more bannings on the way. And a week from today, uh, seven days from now, right now exactly, we will have spoilers for Kamigawa. We are exactly one week away from the start of Kamigawa spoilers. It's been a long. It's been a long wait, but I think we're there. Unbanned are interesting an interesting question i could see some modern unbannings there's several cards that i think would be fine unbanned in modern uh so maybe maybe we could see that unbanned twin finally maybe what do you think about ragavan artifact commander deck 
I mean, Ragavan's actually pretty sweet in Commander. If you draw it on turn one. I don't know about having it be your Commander. Maybe it would be good enough as your Commander. Uh, some ideas about bannings. Oh, boy. Well, we'll talk about it as we go along. I, I lean towards... Uh, it's hard without knowing what the format is. The nightmare is it's just going to be random alchemy changes, and for some reason they consider that to be the BNR uh, BNR update now. That would be the nightmare. Uh, but I don't think it's going to. Maybe there will be alchemy changes, but I don't think it's just going to be alchemy changes. Or they would probably just say alchemy rebalances coming out next week or whatever. So uh, epiphany and standard, either unbannings or stuff like uh, Ragavan Saga Luris Mand in modern. And I don't know, Legacy, people have still been complaining about Legacy a lot. It's not impossible there's some Legacy banning, something that targets Delver, get rid of Daze or something. Although it seems like the most recent tournament results for Legacy are a little bit better. Jonathan Snow, four-year resub. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Good to see you, Jonathan. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have not got a comic out with spoiler card yet. I, I don't know for you one or not, hopefully, but I, I have not seen it yet. Sometimes they come out um, kind of just right before spoiler season, like a week before, so... Uh, I assume if we get one, it'll be coming pretty soon. But anyway, what are we doing today? We're talking about bannings and all this fun stuff, but we are making opponents miserable, hopefully in modern, with Lantern Control. If you don't know Lantern Control, oh my god, this deck. I don't know, do you love Lantern Control or hate Lantern Control? <laughs> Lander Control is one of those decks that I actually love to play, but it can be super annoying to play against. Like, really, really annoying. I have no idea how good it's going to be now. We'll talk about the deck in a minute, though, because we got to do our reminders real quick, and then we'll talk about it as we go along. So, Replay YouTube, this we can find the old streams. Normal YouTube. Tomorrow, we are uh, playing some Modern for Much Brew. We might be sinkholing with extra steps let's say we got we got a sweet deck for much brew tomorrow so check that out on the youtube uh a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com if you get a free goldfish sticker let them know you want one in your order notes as you're picking up your pelucranos or your ranger class or whatever uh, just let them know in your order notes and they will hook you up otherwise merch page tokens t-shirts play mat good way to start the steam and the channel the site donations always appreciated never required two dollars or more gets your message message red out stream ensnaring bridge seems bad ensnaring bridge is actually like kind of the heart of this deck one of the hearts of this deck so how if you've never seen lantern control in action oh my goodness it is it is unique it is super super unique i still can't really believe it ever ended up being a, a real deck and it hasn't been a real deck in a while so we'll have to see so what is the theory of lantern control what are we trying to do with this deck and it, it sounds like some casual against the odds <laughs> dream that actually came true so the idea of this deck we're built around Lantern of Insight. Lantern of Insight, maybe the least powerful card to ever see play in a top tier deck. One mana, everyone plays with the top card of their library revealed, and you can tap it and sack it and make players shuffle their library. So how are we abusing Lantern of Insight? Well, the idea of this deck is we are essentially top of the library control. We're not trying to control our opponent's battlefield. We're trying to control what our opponent draws. So the idea of this deck is we play Lantern so we can know what our opponent's going to draw. And then we have stuff like Pixis of Pandemonium to exile the top card of libraries. We have stuff like Codex Shredder to mill the top card of our opponent's library. And the idea of this deck is we're just going to try to mill every relevant card. We'll let our opponent draw the extra lands that they can't make use of. Uh, but we're going to try to mill any relevant card they could possibly draw. And then we we hide behind our ensnaring bridges. Uh, we have a little bit of discard to get stuff out of our opponent's hand to deal with stuff that they draw before we get our lantern going, get a little bit of removal. But that's the main idea of this deck is to keep our opponent from ever drawing a card that can do anything. Just let them draw all the air that doesn't do anything. And we stop them from drawing anything relevant. Uh, Welcome to the Fishbowl, T uh, DTGF and Bad Boo. Thank you for your subscription. It's a big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So why is this deck on the comeback trail now? And the answer is Urza's Saga. Urza's Saga essentially gives us more copies of all of our important pieces. Urza's Saga, uh, it makes constructs which are nice. We can block with them. We, we even close out the game with them potentially. But the real power is... This is another copy of Lantern of Insight if we need it. It's another copy of our mill one mana rocks, our Kodak Shredder, our Pixis of Pandemoniums. So Ursa Saga really powers up this deck by giving us extra copies of essentially every important piece in our deck. And that's basically it. That's the reason this deck is maybe making a comeback. So we're going to jump into a league and see if it's possible. We win by not losing. Like the way we actually win, it's like technically possible we could win with Ursa Saga, like make some big constructs. Although then Staring Bridges probably make that not super likely. 
basically in every matchup. The main way we win is not losing and milling our opponent's entire library, essentially, because our, uh, like our Codex Shredders just mill target player. So eventually, one card at a time, one tap at a time, we're going to mill our opponent's entire library, or they're just going to get really frustrated and, uh, and give up and stop playing Magic. So that is the goal. It's going to be a long one. That probably means we should jump right into our league, because uh, <laughs> if things go well for this deck and we're not getting crushed... It takes a long time to win unless our opponent concedes. It is it is not a fast deck. <laughs> not even a little bit of a fast deck. So I'm excited for this. Oh, I don't know if I have... So you gotta have different art blood moons. Bridges, if I'm playing different art blood moons in the same deck as the bridges, then I try to have different art bridges. I don't have a hard and fast rule about different art bridges though. I don't actually, I own blood moons, but I don't actually own, I don't actually own the bridges. Oh, it could be, I'm excited to see this deck too. Hey, what's up Ninja Dave, how are you? All right, here we go. See if we can land your control them. Oh, I know this deck. It's it's just so unique. It's so 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 unique. Hey, what's up, Starman DX? Well, we'll see. I mean, I don't even know if it's good anymore. Honestly, like, there's some reasons to think it could be good again, but yeah, we'll have to see. So, uh, how does the deck win by milling the opponent out primarily? <laughs> our our main goal is to very very slowly <laughs> mill our opponent's entire deck. Oh, man. Yeah, Zach Elsick uh, did a ton for the development of the deck. I believe, actually, the story of the deck. A lot of people say Zach built the deck, and that's only partly true. Apparently, it actually came from MTG Salvation. Uh, I believe it was MTG Salvation. And there was, like, a post about it, and Zach, along with a bunch of other people, like, theorycrafted in Brood. And next thing you know, Zach was, like, winning GPs with this deck. So he really championed it, for sure. But uh, it, it's kind of a community-built deck, and it is just... The weirdest idea of a deck. I, I really, truly believe there's never been a deck like it in Magic before, and I don't think there ever necessarily will be again. Like, the concept of it is just so, so unique. And it also, this is a deck that it really, really rewards you for knowing what your opponent's playing. Like, that's the that's the most important thing, because you gotta know, okay, what can I mill, uh, and what can I leave on top of my opponent's deck? Doesn't matter if my opponent draws this card. Uh, so knowing what your opponent's playing, what's in their deck, is really, really, really essential to playing Landry Control well. So we'll see. Hopefully our modern knowledge is up to par. Uh, hang on. Gotta get into... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, gotta get into stream mode. Stream mode. Oh, we get to play first. Snap keep. <laughs> Lander is basically hanter, hammer time before hammer. It's hammer time if, ooh. It's hammer time if hammer time uh, killed you on turn 40 instead of turn two. <laughs> basically, Mr. Finkles, welcome to the fishbowl for the 35th month. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, they're, they're called prison decks. Tasis was the first one. They're not rare, but not unheard of. I mean, I think what makes Lantern unique is the top of the library control aspect there's certainly been prison decks before so i wasn't trying to say there's never been like a prison deck that's that's not true there's certainly been prison decks but i don't think there's ever been another deck that functioned on the the idea that i'm going to reveal the top of my opponent's library and i'm going to try to control what they draw there's certainly like stack control style decks there's stacks control style decks there's prison style decks but i think that's a uh, i think that's like uh, this the, just the way this deck plays is so different this hand actually seems really good we got uh we have our lantern we have two mill rocks, which is big. We got the ensnaring bridge if our opponent's a creature deck, so seems seems fine. Um, lantern control is to fairy control mill, but artifacts instead of tuck to fairy. Uh, I can I can kind of see that. I can see that comparison. Um, hmm. Oh, when do I think we want to sog on two? Yeah, let's just let's just get down our lantern and see what we're up against. Boom, lantern. <laughs> The gig is up. Our opponent knows what's up. <clears throat> uh, how was the interview guest appearance? Oh, it was super fun. It was super fun to do the the Humans of Magic podcast. I think it'll be coming up, uh, uh, I don't know, I, shortly. I don't know the exact release date, but I know it's going to be sometime fairly soon. But it was it was super fun. Got some really interesting questions. Got to answer a bunch of uh, a bunch of Twitter questions that, uh, that people asked and questions that I've never really answered before. How expensive is this deck on Moto? That is a good question. Oh, we're up against Burn? Okay. Goblin Guide. All right, all right, all right. Well, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. So we're drawing Prismatic Ending, but we don't have white mana. Okay. Okay, can we can we Lantern Control Burn? I don't know how this goes, honestly. So land on top. 
Urza Saga. <laughs> Talisman. Kodak Shredder. Oh. Do we let our opponent do we let our opponent draw the draw the skewer is a question. Probably. I think they can draw the skewer. I mean, I don't think we can just we don't have enough information yet to know if the skewer should be milled. Probably not gonna let him draw. Well, hmm. If we can get empty handed, we can bridge the creatures away. We wanna see if our opponent has another land. Leading on Sunbay Canyon often means you only have one land. If our opponent only has one land, our goal is gonna be to keep them from drawing another land. That's gonna be that's gonna be goal number one, I think. Bonet gets and hits us. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they have an, uh, a land drop here. I'm guessing they don't. Oh, they do. Oh, that's not good. All right, that's going to make it a lot harder that they do have another land. <laughs> Skewers our face. And. Suspends a Rift Bolt. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this might be This might be a problem. This might be a problem. All right, so Urza Saga triggers. Play Concealed Courtyard. Play Ghoul Caller's Bell. And pass the turn. So I think we just want to make a big construct. Our opponent can definitely draw the Swift Spear. Okay, so our new plan is keep our opponent from drawing burn, I think. <laughs> About it. Yeah, getting too many lands in hand could be an issue. So, I remove the deck command. Oh, <laughs> oops, hang on. <laughs> I can I can fix that. So, so what are we rooting for banning wise? All right, deck command should be should be updated now. Opponent more lands. Swift Spia. So we don't really want them to draw the bolt, I don't think. Three cards in hand. Opponent. Attacks, attacks. Well, do we have any... All right, Chad, do we have any life gain in the main deck? Make the construct. Hmm. Is there any way we can gain life? There's not, I don't think. That's that's less than ideal. Laura's man is what I think I would actually like the most. Hmm. Hammer? Interesting. I haven't even really thought about. I haven't really even thought about a. Uh, about hammer potentially needing to be banned. Yeah, there's n oh that collective brutality. Collective brutality is technically life gain. All right, let's Google call her bell. We need our opponent to start drawing lands, I think. We can kill the creatures. Collective Brutality would gain us some life if we can find it. Opponent cracks. Oh, do they have Searing Blaze? Searing Blaze is a little bit annoying. All right, Mill. Oh, there's that's Brutality. I mean, Brutality is one of the cards we are wanting. Like, that is, <laughs> that is top tier. All right, sure. We will block the Swift Spear. Oh, this is going to be close. This is going to be so close. Opponent does have Searing Blaze. Yup. All right, so we're going to five. We mill your Lava Spike. Okay, Goblin Guide is fine. Goblin Guide's fine. We go to five. Hmm. We're going to lose our saga. Ooh, tough decisions. Tough decisions. Oh, so we have four mana. So we can collect a brutality. Kill this, kill this, gain, uh, kill this to rest, gain life. How do we avoid... Oh, all right. We're not going to make a construct, I don't think. I think we're going to float mana. 
I mean, Modern is in a pretty interesting spot. I mean, if they're going to be on something in Modern, I would go for... I would go for uh, Luris, number one. Luris, Ragavan Saga would be my top three. Not that I... I mean, Luris I would like to see bad. If there, if I was going to call for a banning of anything, it would be Luris. Uh, maybe that's my personal biases. The other two... I wouldn't mind if they got banned, but I'm not like, you know, really stumping for banning. Four pounds of pulled pork cut into quarters, covered with dry rub in seven spices, seared five minutes on all sizes in a pan, beer poured in and set in the oven for three and a half hours, then shredded with two forks and covered with thick barbecue. Ooh, that sounds a uh, delicious magic garb. <sighs> Land comes in on tap before Saga sacks. Oh, that's true. We do have another mana, don't we? You're right, because we're going to go down a land. All right, we got to think this through. So, how, wait, how are we going to do this? So, we need to Brutality. We need to Brutality. So, if we make a con we can make a Construct Brutality. That's not bad. Maybe that's our best play? Make a Construct Brutality. So, one, two. One, two, Construct, Untap Land, Brutality. I mean, that seems pretty good. Hmm. Wow, so many, so many choices. All right, boom. Make the Construct. We lose the Saga. We get a Codex Shredder, I think. Hmm. Actually, ooh, okay, all right. Am I am I crazy, chat? What do you think about what do you think about getting pithy needle to name Sunbait Canyon? Yeah, I I almost think that's not the most intuitive line. We have two mill rocks already. That might actually be that might actually be the right line. Yeah, Cage I don't think does anything at the moment. All right, let's get the needle. So Pithy Needle, name Sunbaked Canyon. So our opponent can't draw at instant speed and get out of this. And then we Blooming Marsh. And then we two mode Brutality. Wow, do we three mode? Maybe we just three mode. Do we just discard everything? Maybe we just discard everything. That might be worth it. <laughs> Duress you, kill, drain. Just discard, discard them all. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Discard them all. Oh, they had another. Yeah, they had the other canyon in hand. Okay, so I think we're. I think we stabilized, and we might not even want the bridge because we might want to win by attacking. Pony can draw the Goblin Guide. That does not hurt us. Anything that doesn't hurt us is fine. Oh, I think we got there. Oh, I think we got there. I think we stabilized. I don't think our opponent can win now. I think we can control every one of their draws for the rest of this game. We'd like to find another mana rock, another mill rock, but I think we have this locked up. So we get to mill. Uh, that's a mill rock. We get to mill our opponent. Oh, Boros Charm. We don't really want them to draw Boros Charm, I don't think. I think we're good. I think we're good. Opponent passes. We draw Kodak Shredder. Play Kodak Shredder. We can also make sure that we never mill out with this Academy <laughs> with this Academy Ruins. All right, so let's see. Mill oh, Boros Charm. Goblin Guide. Sure. Ooh, Autumn Jake, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup chip for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hitting both of those canyons was huge. All right. Um Sure. Pony can have another goblin guide, I think. Opponent draws a goblin guide. And it's such a unique deck. Like I know I know it has like a mixed reputation and some people don't like it, but it's such a unique archetype. Opponent passes. Well now we just gotta make sure our opponent only ever draws lands. Searing Blaze. Hmm. I kind of want this prismatic ending, honestly. I mean, prismatic ending a goblin guide. Yeah, let's keep it. Draw the ending. Definitely don't want Inquisition. Kill a goblin guide. 
The other reason not to keep bridge is... Okay, inspiring vantage, yes. <laughs> Please draw that. The other reason not to keep bridges, we kind of want to win with this construct. <laughs> About it. Uh, next turn, we might start attacking. Next turn might be the turn where we start it. We don't really want to draw this Inquisition. I would like to not take any damage, but maybe maybe that's maybe that's playing too afraid. Um, Miller, we'll draw land. Sure, Miller opponent, land on top, untap. I mean, we should we should be good, right? We should be good. Hey, what's up, uh, Frank Rado? How are you? Winzo, good to see you, good to see you. Yeah, we'll start attacking this turn, try to close it out. Can't complain about Tron if you're drawing Lantern, <laughs> if you're playing Lantern. Uh, really, is, is Lantern, where does Lantern rank on your most hated modern deck list? I'm actually curious. Why no Karn? Uh, you could play Karn in the deck. I mean, Karn, Karn Tezzerets have shown up in the deck in the past, so I think that there are cards that are in the conversation. Can we make blue mana for Academy Ruins? Um, yes. Spire of Industry or Glimmer Void give us all five colors. So we do have lands that let us do that. So we play the forest. We just haven't found them yet. Hit you for seven. Opponent. I mean, I, I actually kind of like it, too. It was a little bit, when it was, like, one of the most played decks in the format, even then it was kind of interesting to play against. So, milling ourselves out is is not a super big concern because, uh, oh, so another Sunday Canyon. It's not a super big concern because uh, we can always turn our mill on our opponents, and we have Academy uh, Ruins. Hey, Seth, do you think this deck can win against Tron? It's possible. I don't know if it's likely, but it's it's possible. We can we can possibly win against Tron. I mean, against Tron, we either keep them off Tron or keep them off finishers would be the goal. Hey, I would love to see uh I would love to see your deck, KF. Question, is the plan to play the entire league on stream tonight? If yes, is the plan to play till midnight? I mean, my goal is to play the entire to play the entire league tonight. That is my that is my goal. Um you know, I think we just go for the win. Mill. Like, if we hit a removal spell, we just win immediately. Go to Shredder. Well, I mean, I I mean, I mean, guess there's no way we lose if we just do this. <laughs> it's, like, actually impossible that we lose from here. So we just play this. Go to Shredder. Grow the dork. Uh, yeah. I think you can try to keep him off Tron in the early game, at least, if you can. And then... And then keep them off finishers. Friendly Lantern player here. Your matchup is burn is a rough one. Just make sure they don't have any targeted burn on top. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's working out so far. We managed to stabilize. This is game one against burn, and I, I think we just got him locked. Like, they're drawing this land. We got a lethal. So I think, oddly, oddly, pitching that ensnaring bridge was big. And I think that's one of the things that makes this deck different now. Like, in the past, ensnaring bridge was like, Oh, opponent's going to get Lurus. All right. In the past... It, oh, wait. We don't just win. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. That changes things. When did they put Lurus in hand? Oh, yeah. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we did want that in Staring Bridge. <laughs> Opponent. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, that does change things a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, we don't have the mana to buy back with Shredder. One, two, three, four. I mean, we can do it over the course of two turns if we can live that long. Opponent did not attack. Interesting. All right, well, mill the land. Okay, so we need the bridge now. Now we need the bridge. Buckle up. It might be a long one. Mill. Ourselves. I mean, we just hit a bridge. That would be the best. Yeah, I kind of I kind of forgot about Luris. <laughs> Hanging out in the companion zone. <clears throat> Mill. Versus Saga. 
I mean, I guess we're keeping the saga. I mean, I think we're still okay. It's just going to take us a little longer. Yeah, this, this is still game one. The bigger issue we might have is timing out. <laughs> I think that's going to be that's going to be a challenge. All right, so we pass the turn. Opponent can replay creatures. That's fine. We stay on defense. We get back a ensnaring bridge with a Kodak Shredder and then back at it. About it. Inspiring Vantage, Swift Spear on top. Oh, they're never gonna they're never gonna talk about the economy. I mean I guess I shouldn't say never, but I don't think that talking about the economy is actually is actually at the top of Wizards to do list. Opponent. <laughs> Volus of Citadel Lantern would be funny. You can definitely play a lot of spells off the top. You can play so many. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Kodak Shredder. Get back the bridge. Okay, so now we lock the creatures. And now we got to mill our opponent out of the game. <laughs> Oh, they've been promising us for years. I mean, I hope they do it, but they've been promise, promising us that for, like, literally years. All right, Saga ticks up. One, two, three, bridge. And then lantern. And then pass the turn, and well, now we gotta mill them out. Can we mill them out? Can we not time out? That's gonna be the that's gonna be the challenge. Can we not time out? Opponent. Monastery Swift Spear. I mean, we were attacking before our opponent rebuilt their board. Goblin Guide. Opponent. All right, we gotta start. We gotta start milling. Each player mills, opponent mills, opponent mills. Searing Blaze isn't the best. All right, we untap. Float a mana. Get a Kodak Shredder. Pixis. Mill you. You can draw your land. Pass the. I mean, this is gonna work. Pull us down to thirty cards. We just gotta do it without timing out. Do we have takes on pauper bands? I mean, they seem good. My my overall take is I haven't played much pauper in a while, but my overall take is I think that we don't really want this Inquisition. I think that the pauper panel is gonna be super helpful for the format. So I think that they are likely are likely good. Good changes. They seem like good changes. Hey, what's up, Stone Rain? How are you? Opponent crack. Is our opponent giving up? <laughs> opponent shuffles into an Eidolon. Uh, all right. Mill you. Mill you. Exile. So opponent's under 26 cards. Okay. Uh, we untap, we draw land, we play the land. <laughs> Opponent, uh, we will exile that, get rid of the Siri Blaze. <laughs> I mean, this is how Landred works, this is how Landred works. I'm deadly, ooh, deadly, feeling, uh, feeling good today, Stone Rain? I mean, we're, we're gonna do it, we're, we're making it, we're making it. Fetch lands are worse than normal lands. I mean, points down to 24. We're, this is working. This is working. <sighs> Shredder twice for brutality. Mm, but that's not milling him out. <laughs> that's not milling him out, though. <laughs> I want to mill him out. I probably should do that because, <laughs> because of time issues, but... <laughs> But I really want to mill him out. Uh, all right, mill, mill. We're getting, this is going faster than you think. 21 cards, 20 cards. Oh, also, I don't know if I told you this, but tomorrow's Commander Clash might be my 
all-time favorite game of Commander Clash, so you should uh, you should consider watching tomorrow's Commander Clash. It is a really good one. Age of Stirrings. Take a Spire of Industry. Or a Urza Saga, rather. Play the Urza Saga. Pass the turn. All right. We still got 12 minutes on the clock. That's not bad. Opponent's drawing a land. That's fine. They got 20 cards in their deck. That's also fine. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> the game is so crazy. It is ridiculously crazy. It, it, it is it is beyond words. It is just one of... It's one of the most... Oh, okay. Well, all right. Now we're going to do it. It's one of the most unique games I think we've ever played. And I think it's also one of the most interesting games. It's just... And it's viewer submitted week, which makes it even better. All right. You know what? For the sake of time, I'm going to go against everything I believe. We're going to Kodak Shredder back at Collective Brutality, and we're going to win. I feel dirty about this, but but I don't think we have a choice just because of clock issues. Uh, Tomer? Tomer was not there. Tomer was not there. And then today we recorded the, the last day of... The last episode of Season 11, which means... Uh, Crew changes on the horizon, and uh, a new season will be born. Uh, all right, let's just let's just win. I we will mill someone out. I promise. I mostly I just realized like uh, the clock is the clock is a concern. This is game one. This is only game one, especially on stream when we're talking. Um, <laughs> there is a bit of a concern about the about the time thing. Like that is something I'm scared of. Yeah, so I think so. I think the Commander Clash schedule is tomorrow, in my opinion, one of the GO episodes. And then next week's episode that we recorded today will be the, the season-ending episode, uh, our, our send-off episode for, for uh, you know, whoever might be leaving the cast next season. So you'll find out about that next week. And then we'll do a stats episode, probably one week break, uh, and, then, and then pick it up again uh, with season 12. What are the differences between Magic Online and Magic Arena? Well, the biggest difference is is the formats you can play. Actually, hmm. Maybe Grab Tigger's Cage is worth it just because of Loris, honestly. So the biggest difference is uh right now we're playing we're playing modern. We're playing modern, that's a format that you just really it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on It doesn't exist on uh Magic. Hmm. It doesn't exist on Magic Arena, so you get more options format-wise. I think that is uh, that is the biggest difference. Yeah, we we got a ton of chatters today. Welcome everyone, including some uh, some first-time chat members. Probably probably don't buy followers, <laughs> but thank you, Demizi. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's wrong like that? So I think bringing a welding jar to protect our stuff because opponent will bring in. Artifact Destruction. Spell Sky's really good against Burn, because it can eat some Burn spells. We're going to leave in the one the one Graph Digger's Cage because of Luris and run it like that. Oh, so what do you think of the what do you think of the Clash On thing? You think it would be better if the winner was the one to say Clash On? Hmm. This hand seems well, it seems pretty bad. We have two prismatic endings that are good. Two pithing needles are redundant. We do have an Urza saga. Yeah, we're gonna mulligan. Ooh, Inventor's Fair's life game. Ooh. We do have two sagas though. Oh. But if they just curve out with burn spells. If the would the winner picks who said it would be interesting. So one thing someone said that kind of we did win game one. Um, oh, can we keep this? So turn one land welding jar. Turn two saga. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna mulligan. All right, this one we're keeping. We will put a expedition map to the. Academy ruins an expedition map to the bottom. Well, we'll see. The sand's not great. Not great at all. <sighs> yeah, the problem is we didn't have any lanterns or mill stuff with with any of those hands. And we really, like, lantern is just so important. We didn't have any quick lanterns. I guess we could have got one eventually with, 
with a Urza Saga, but... So one of the things people mentioned about Clash On is uh, someone mentioned in the comments that they felt like it incentivized people to to uh, not play for the win and just play for, for not losing, which that is a fair point. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's like a, how bad of a thing that is, but I do think that is like kind of true. Oh boy. Talismans for days. I'll take a song, I guess. Mm, not good. Not good. Not good at all. I better not adapt. Have I tried Master Duel yet? No, what is, uh, what is Master Duel? What do you think of Cursed Totem in this deck versus Voidmere? Um, I mean, Cursed Totem, I think, could be good. Oh, dear. Eidolon 2. Oh, this is looking so sketchy. Yeah, I think uh, our opponent might have us. Maybe we got lucky to win last game. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do a little bit of killing of ourselves. Urza Saga. Uh, Talisman down to 14. And a Pixis of Pandemonium. Boom, down to 12. <laughs> We didn't like living anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think Burn. I mean, we we probably got lucky to win the first match, honestly. About it goes attacking. Yeah, no, oh, no bridge, no lanterns, a million spire of industries. Oh, uh, El Orange Sushi. The sub goes through uh, eventually. Sometimes it takes a minute. Welcome to the fish bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rift Bolt suspended. All right, yeah, that's that's good enough. Uh, I mean, our opponent has lethal, but there's no way we can win, so we might as well save save the time, go to the next one. The clock is a concern. If you do decide to ever play this deck, the clock is something to be aware of. Like running out of time is a is a legit is a legit concern. Oh, do we need the fatal pushes? We're gonna be on the play this game, which is good. You know what? Uh, do we even want Inquisitions? Maybe we go one pithing needle. Go up a fatal push. Run it like that. Yeah, that, it's either you get like, okay, there's no way I can win this in ice scoop, or it's like, okay, we're gonna do this for an, the next half hour. Why I really slowly mill you, and I'm gonna win. It's possible we should have got the second hand with all the sagas. You know what? This we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep this because we got a bunch of life gain. And we got a Nerves of Saga, and we got removal. This hand's actually like kind of sweet. Uh, so Spire of Industry, Welding Jar, Elixir of Immortality. Go. Urza of Saga is pretty bad on turn one. Much better on turn two. Uh, is there a version of Lantern with Surgical Extraction? Yeah. So Lantern used to pretty much always play Surgical Extraction. Although, hey, welcome, Riley, Ryan. Um, but the the new versions don't always play it. This version does not have it. But yeah, the old ones sometimes would even surgical in the main deck. It's mostly a meta game, a meta game choice, and how much stuff you need to be uh be exiling. Oh, we have a new donation from ooh, big donation from Dry's twenty dollar donation. When I actually play Monitor today, I never thought you'd make my dreams come true. Lander is my favorite deck ever. I've been playing it since before War was printed. Even tried to force it into the Opal batting. This is amazing. Well, Dry's, thank you for the donation. And I mean, I heard you when you asked about playing Modern. I had no idea that lantern was your favorite deck that's just kind of a kind of a coincidence but i'm glad it worked out that way all right so urza saga trigger collector brutality how many modes can we go <sighs> how low can you go i mean we got to kill and duress at least two modes Duress and kill. And just discard a, I guess, an ending. Yeah, let's let's do it. Two goblin guides. Boros, charm, lava spike. All right, opponent's hand's not that good. We will pass the turn. I mean, hopefully... I mean, they're going to have two goblin guides, which is... A little bit frightening, but we're going to be able to start making big constructs, which uh, big ish constructs that can hopefully block them about it. And we do have some life gain. We do have some life gain about it. Double goblin guide. 
It was a combat. Gonna smag us. Well, do your thing, Urza Saga. Top cards, Inquisitions. Not the best. Draw Inquisition. Take up Saga. Play the land. Pass the turn. Well, we're basically trusting that these Saga tokens keep us alive. Opinion needed. The Golgari theme of my Innistrad cube is Delirium. Which being said, uh, that being said, which card would you put in the limited green black slot? Old Stick Fingers or Old Rust Team? Also, just notice they're apparently both old. Yeah, there's been a lot of old cards in Golgari lately. Um, Delirium. I, uh, I think I would go with Old Rust Team. That would be my my number one choice, I think, is Old Rusty. Uh, I kind of like Old Stick Fingers better in more, like, Reanimator-style decks. Because Delirium cares about getting different card types in your graveyard. Old Stick Fingers is only ever going to put creatures in your graveyard. Uh, old Rusty can mill anything, and the Blood Tokens can let you discard anything. So I kind of think that Old Rusty would fit the theme better. Alter Boy, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, opponent attacks. We block, kill a goblin guide. Down to 12. Opponent, Bloodstained Mire gets a land. Lava spikes us to nine. And Eidolon, interesting. Okay. Well, okay. Make a construct. Get a... Oh. Get a what? So we got a lantern in hand. Well, this is actually kind of close. Hey, Chuck, good to see you. Last anniversary, you said something would get better, and it did. Are you a wizard? Oh, I mean, probably just lucky, but I'm glad things got better, Chuck. Welcome back to the fishbowl for the 30th month. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, okay, how do we do this? Oh, boy. Good to see you, Chuck, by the way. Thank you. Thank you again for the, for the switch. Um... What are we doing with this? Five. Hmm. <laughs> Let's take Codex. Oh, maybe we take the needle? I really honestly truly don't know what we're supposed to take here. Oh, six minutes. Arch Burglar Lord, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take map and just go all in on the Urza Saga plan. Yeah, all right. I can buy that. Um. Hmm. So if we attack, our opponent attacks us back, hits us to seven. Uh, we can gain five with this elixir at some point. All right, we're not going to attack this turn. We want to gain life first. Pass the turn. Oh, I think we got to wait one turn. There are ways that we die if we attack there. Where our opponent goes, Boros Charm Lightning Bolt dead. About it. Gets the Luris. Okay. And passes. We draw. Another lantern that we can't really get down. Oh, this is so close. Inventor's Fair gains one life a turn. The problem is our opponent is going to get Luris and just go super wide, and we don't actually have a we don't have an answer to that. We might be in trouble. Fortnus, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm. Oh my goodness. 
this L Loris is such a annoyingly problematic card. Well, okay. Oh, and we don't even have the we don't even have the mana to gain life and Inquisition. Well, we got to take the Loris. We don't have a choice. If we die as a result of this, we die as a result of it. I mean, ending the Eidolon is, doesn't do that much, I don't think, compared to Luris. Yeah, I think we have to. I think we have to take the Luris, or we just die. Would have been nice to draw land over the infinite lanterns. Inquisition. Take the Luris. Well, I mean, we're not dead on board. Pass the turn. Can we play a lantern? Can we play a lantern? We go to five, four, three, two. <laughs> this deck is so tricky. So we go to we go to five, bolted down to two, but then we get to gain back life next turn. Well, they can't swift. I guess they're, we would be dead if they drew a land. All right. Yeah. No lantern. Pass the turn. All right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Opponent untaps. Yeah. We should be good time wise. Just because. All right. Rip Bolt suspended is not good. Not playing the swift spear. Hmm. That makes me think they drew skull crack, which really scares me. Graph Digger's Cage. Where's our lands? Where are our lands? Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess if they top deck, if they top deck Skullcrack, we're just in serious trouble. But Elixir. Got to do it now so we don't get stuck where our opponent can kill us with the life gain on the stack. All right, crack Sunbait Canyon. Well, we go up to 12 temporarily. We pass the turn. I wish we could cast spells. Not that easy. With this idol on out. Do you think that current standard could be a good starting point for an eternal format? No companions, but keeps lands MDFCs. Ah. Uh I mean, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it would be, it seems like a fine point for a, a starting point for an eternal format. Nothing really jumps out at me uh, is making it like, especially like Magic Origins always felt like, okay, that would be a really good starting point for an eternal format because it's, you know, kind of this reset. Uh, there's nothing that jumps out about current standard like that, but I mean, yeah, that would be fine. Cage is actually really good against Luris. That's probably the the biggest upside. The problem here is we're in danger of just getting naturally burnt out. Hmm. Like, if we keep doing this, our opponent is gonna draw burn spells and kill us. Like, we're we're not gaining enough life to stay in this game. So right now our strategy is a losing one. There's uh, there's just no way we win doing what we're doing now. So we got to do something different, but I'm not sure what we can do different to get us out of this. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that probably is the best option. Like maybe we can make enough creatures that we can start attacking again. But we got to do something cuz like do it, like the the path that way that we're on our opponent's just gonna keep drawing burn, and they are gonna use those burn spells to make us to make us die. Opponent cracks a bloodstained mire. I mean, yeah. The problem is ending Eidolon, we're just we're so close to just being dead on the spot to burn. If we can start making more constructs, things get a little bit more appealing opponent yeah i'm hoping that if we can start making more constructs then maybe we can start attacking we just never yeah they are boltable but if they're throwing bolts at our constructs they're not going in our face so 
Like, our opponent having a bunch of bolts is going to kill us no matter what they throw them at at this point. <laughs> But yeah, we gotta we gotta try to get into a race position at some point. The other thing is this Urza Saga can eventually gain us five more life, which is that is relevant. Those spells, guy. Boy, this this Eidolon's kind of insane. This Eidolon is the card that's like actually giving us a really hard time here. Uh all right, we will pass the turd. Yeah, this Eidolon. If we could be casting our spells without dying, I would like the shape that we're in, but that's proving to be difficult in Eidolonville. About it. Cracks down to 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Did not cast a burn spell instant speed, which is interesting. About it. Thinking. Passing. Well, I think it's beatdown time. Mega Construct. See if we draw an untap land. We do. Okay. Well, in that case, we make a Construct. Make another Construct. I mean, now we got to go aggro. There's no no choice. Yeah, you know what would be interesting is Shadow Sphere. If we had a Shadow Sphere in our sideboard, we would totally be in amazing shape. Elixir. Combat. Attack with... Hmm. All of them? Eh, let's attack with two of them. All right. Here they come. Here comes the golems. Wow, opponent's going to block with idle on. Okay, sure. Opponent blocks. I mean, this is it. It all comes down to this. Eidolon's down. Past the turd. It all. This is the turd. If we survive this turd, we win the game. Opponent untaps. We're at nine. Do we survive and pick up win number one? Lantern? Lantern? Come on. Hold. Hold. Opponent. Swift Spear. That's, that's fine. Swift Spear, sure. I mean, the problem is we got, for our opponents, we got five more life to gain. So if they tap down where they can't skull crack us, then we get to Elixir and gain five, and then we're good. Opponent. Yeah, we need the mana for the for the Elixir. Opponent, combat. I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we're going to win this. Oh, opponent. Passes. We untap. Well, now we get to play a spell sky. About it. Bolts our face. Okay. We drop to six. About it. All right, we go to combat. We attack you with a bunch of seven sevens and win with one minute exactly on the clock. Oh, I think we got, I don't know how they get out of it now. I think we got there. That's a, not an easy matchup either. Oh my God. Oh, take it out, bird. Oh, oh. Uh, I sent out a message on Twitter. I hope you see it and respond. If not, that's okay too. I'll have to uh, I'll have to look for it. Uh, Riley, Ryan. Oh, hey, what's up, Jables? How are you? Well, <laughs> that's actually a pretty pretty good example of the heart attacks that uh, this deck can give you. Like so close, on time, so grindy, but in the end, it worked out. Oh, actually, has anyone been playing a uh, pioneer? There's been this, there is, yeah, Saga is in this deck. Um, has anyone been playing Pioneer? I've heard that Pioneer's making a comeback. Has anyone, has anyone experienced this Pioneer comeback? Hey, what's up, Sequence? How are you? I've seen people talking about, about it making a comeback. Ooh, that's a, that is a spicy deck. I haven't seen Circu in, uh, in quite a while. 
on more ego super fun i remember playing kaya's extraction with all the surgical extractions and extirpates and uh, the plan actually worked pretty well if you could mill it hey what's up let's see how are you i yeah i mean it seems like pioneer content is making a comeback and there's more players playing in pioneer leagues so it seems like there's some there's some signs there's some signs and i wonder if part of it too is people getting like um uh, like everyone getting fed up about arena or many people getting fed up about arena and maybe jumping to magic online and trying out and trying out a, a, a new format that isn't as uh, expensive. Ooh, all right, Riley, I will, uh, I will give a look for it. I really like Pioneer on Moto. My LGS has been floating the idea of hosting events for it. I really hope it makes a comeback. Pioneer when it first came out was so sweet. And I feel, yeah, we're going to keep this. And I feel like it's a format that still has a lot of uh, a lot of potential. Yeah, I've had a lot of people tell me, uh, I stopped playing Magic Online, went to Arena, but now I'm playing Magic Online again. Or I tried Magic Online for the first time. So I think Magic Online is is doing well at the moment. And that probably is a good thing for, for Pioneer, which is mostly a Magic Online format. Ooh. All right. Some sort of, ooh, boy. Hmm. This is interesting. So this is a matchup where we're gonna have to keep our opponent from drawing lands and non-lands. Do we have a lantern? Yes. All right. Well, opponent knows what's up. Pass the turn. So we gotta stop them from primeval tightening us, but we also gotta stop them from valicutting us. I don't think we have land destruction. Oh, okay. We need a pithing needle. Wow. Okay, we're gonna need some serious things. Gonna need some serious things. More pictures of the bear. I will I will get more bear pictures online, I promise. Uh okay, so well Landrum of Insight. And uh, Kodak Shredder. Oh, we gotta play a land first. Um and Inventor's Fair and Kodak Shredder. <laughs> this Ren though. Okay. This is going to be interesting. It is basically the Twilight Zone. We're doing our best. We're doing our best. We won our first match. We won our first match against Burn. So it's possible to win games with it. I am very, very, very scared of what our opponent's doing here, though. Yeah, we got to keep them off Dryad. I guess we can't really stop them from getting lands at this point with this Ren. Like, they can just keep getting the land from the graveyard abodent <laughs> this 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 deck will make you uh lose your hair it'll make you go gray that is that's how land your control works it's, it's not a deck that we play some decks where it's like okay we do this big spectacular combo thing and you win by a million miles Lantern is not one of those decks. <laughs> no, no, no. Lantern doesn't really have a a win by a million mile mode. It has a eke out the, the slightest advantage mode. And that's pretty much its only mode. All right, Ancient Stirrings. Well, okay. Ancient Stirrings. Go digging. Take Urza's Saga. Any order. Urza Saga. And Kodak Shredder. And Graph Digger's Cage. And Goo. Alright. Well, this can get us a Pithing Needle eventually. Uh, it is it is Lantern's fault that you're bald. If you're bald, blame Lantern. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Magikarp. I, I thought you were talking about this deck, which you actually did unintentionally describe how this deck works. We, we can now let our opponent draw this. Yeah, the cage does shut down Ren's alt. Although Ren just getting a land every turn is also not ideal. I don't think we have a way to kill a Valakut. All right, ticks up. Hmm. I kind of want this Inquisition just for the information of what's in our opponent's hand. We might keep it just for that reason. Mill the Dryad. The opponent's going to shuffle the Dryad away. 
<laughs> trying trying to make her opponent cry. This opponent might not be crying. Favorite saga. <laughs> oh, right now this second it is it might be oh, expressive iteration. I think we would rather you not draw that. Right now I'm feeling waking the trolls. <laughs> I don't know if that's really my favorite of all time, but Waking the Trolls is a cool underrated card. Uh-oh. Oh, they're going to cycle for it? Okay. Omnath. Well, <laughs> I guess we also probably don't want... Oh, my pony has so many things we got to mill. <laughs> okay. Another Valica. Well, we get to mill that sort of. Scapeshift. Oh, that could be an issue. Uh, all right, untap, draw the Inquisition, gain a life. All right, let's let's get a peek. Let's get a peek at what's going on over there in busted dot deck. Oh, bring delight. Okay. Well, it's all lands though in bring delight. I'll take the expressive iteration. Glimmer void. <sighs> but bring to light gets scape. How do we not die to how do we not die to scape shift? How do we how do we avoid the scape shift kill? Is it possible to avoid the scape shift kill? There's one on top and there's a bring the light in hand, and our opponent's gonna have the lands for it. So we're just dead? Yeah, the problem is they got the bring the light in hand, so they have they have another scape shift. So I don't even know if milling this one is worth it. I guess we gotta mill this one. Ooh! Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, all right, not good. Oh, prismatic ending. Okay. <laughs> not good. I mean, they have the lands in hand, though, so they're going to have the lands in, like, two turns. What we wanted to do is mill the scape shift and find a thought seize to get rid of the bring to light, but hmm, this prismatic ending is going to get rid of our... Is gonna get rid of our lantern most likely. And we're just we're running out of we're running out of options. Us yeah, this this matchup actually feels tougher than bird. Opponent, prismatic endings are lantern. Oh, our graph digger's cage. Interesting. Okay. I was not exactly expecting that. Well, make a construct. Do you think this deck could play Karn? Um, it definitely could. You definitely could play Karn. It would probably be pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, so we're dead to bring a late scape shift, right? So we have to, we have to self mill for a thought seize, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, do we have one more turn? Because we've gained life. Yeah, they they answered they answered the cage with the prismatic ending. So the cage is gone. I don't think it stops uh lands from coming into play anyway. Only creatures. Uh Hmm. I mean, are we are we even dead to scape shift this turn at 21? Seven lands is 18, right? Valakut is not a mountain. All right, so I think, okay. One, two, mega construct. Gain a life. Yeah, I think we can survive one more turn, but we probably should still try to find a Thought Seize because we're going to need it. Prismatic Ending. No. 
male. Oh, oh get me close. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are they cycling? All right, cycles to grab the land. Another lantern. All right, well, we... Get a pithing needle on Ren. Play lantern number two. Attack our opponent. Opponent blocks. Oh my goodness. Wait, are we dead this turn and we don't realize it? All right, pass the turn, pass the turn, pass the turn. Hey, I love you too, Diego. Corey, how are you? Opponent. Uh, someone wrote in the chat they want to play Troll Side in their cube. What type of deck wants it? Uh, Ramp is probably the easiest home because it's six mana. You really need to, really need to get it down a little bit faster. Hmm. If our opponent has to bring to has to scape shift for something, or bring to light for something that's not scape shift, things become interesting. Oh, they get to supreme verdict away our stuff. Wow, what a this ended up being really close. All right, opponent has a land untapped. Well, now I think it is literally thought Caesar bust. So opponent gets to wrath to stay alive. Oh, they don't have double white. 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 They're dead. They're dead. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was so close. Oh, they had the wrath. They didn't have the mana. They did the, they did the hard part of finding the wrath by cycling, but they couldn't do the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't do the easy part of casting it. Wow, I can't believe we stole that win. Uh, well, Necromentia, I think, is probably coming in. So, I, I will say, playing this deck, I kind of miss having Surgical Extraction. Surgical Extraction is really good in matchups like this. Because it, it was Surgical, you can mill, like, a single Scape Shift or Valica and then get rid of all of them. So, it is a little odd to me to not see any Surgicals in the in the whole entire 75. <laughs> yeah, all these games have been super close. Um, Alright, so, Torpor, probably not... Spell Skype, probably. Needle, we already have a couple. Graph Digger's Cage, meh. Thoughtseize, probably. Welding Jar, maybe. Yeah, Spell Skype's pretty good. Spell Skype's one of our better options. Uh, what about Prismatic Ending? Do we just have to keep it? Inquisition, maybe? Inquisition doesn't hit the good stuff, right? Maybe we went on the Inquisitions. It doesn't get... <clears throat> it doesn't get Primeval Titan. It does get Dryad. It doesn't get Omnath. Uh, nice to finally see someone else playing my all-time favorite deck. I'm I'm actually super happy that so many people like this deck, honestly. Um, I was worried that <laughs> when I decided to play it that everyone was going to be like, Oh, Lantern, I hate this deck. But it, the overall, the, the overall feeling has been that people seem to really like it, which is cool because I also... I also I also really like this deck. Void mirror for hmm. Uh, trophy for land destruction. They get another land though. I don't think blowing up a valid. If we had surgical, if I had surgical, then I'd be down for the assassin's trophy of Valicate surgical at plan. But I don't think just hitting a Valica and giving them back another land actually does that much, especially with Ren running around. You think mirror is great? Hmm. People seem to like the mirror. Um. Uh, all right, one mirror. Run it like that. 
Yeah, the constructs definitely help. Like, we've actually had ways to be like, hey, we can just kill you, rather than like, oh, we gotta hide under our bridge for 30 turns while we mill you. So it definitely is nice to to have the option to be like, oh, like, <laughs> we make a couple big things and you just die. Teferi Control is boring to watch, but it lets you interact more with chat. Lantern Control is interesting to watch from drama, but it takes all your focus. You can't talk too much to chat. It's a trade-off. Yeah, that is true. That is one of the, the downsides, I think, of this deck as a stream deck, is there's such a, a time constraint that uh, some decks you can just like kind of talk to chat the whole time and click a couple buttons and it's fine. This deck, if you do that, you're going to time out like every time. <sighs> I think someone said, someone said that if more people were good at this deck, it would be the best deck in modern. Like it has the ability to be the strongest deck in modern, but it's so hard to play and requires so much, so hard to play like optimally. And it requires so much knowledge of like the cards in your opponent's deck or what cards could possibly be in your opponent's deck that there's like just a, a natural cap on how good it can be because most people are not going to take the time uh, in the effort to like, like get really good at lantern but if they did it, it could be the best deck in the format if people actually like took the time to to learn it and practice it which actually might be true it is it is mentally taxing you do not get i mean i could could you imagine playing this at tournaments could you imagine playing this like at a tournament level where lantern no lantern um it seems like such a hard deck to play at tournaments because you're gonna you're gonna play this like hour long round. You're gonna win right at the buzzer, and then you're gonna get five minutes or something, and then you're gonna have to do that again, and you're gonna have to do that so two days straight, like round after round. When you play burn or something, or you play eight whack or something, uh, or some aggro deck, and you're just like, oh, okay, my round's over in fifteen minutes. I get to go hang out for forty five minutes, and then you know do it again. But yeah, I, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> just the grind of trying to play this at a tournament. I mean, even a league, like we're we're a we're a match and a half maybe into our league, and it's uh been an hour and fifteen minutes. ADK Mark, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoops here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Zach is Zach is awesome. I don't know Zach too well, like in person, but I've talked to him uh, quite a bit online, and I I like Zach a lot. About it. He wrote a, at one point, before he did the Wizards thing, he wrote a, a few uh, articles on Goldfish. Hmm. Lantern, please? Ha ha. <laughs> Asking you shall receive. Uh, well, um, hmm. Uh, Lantern of Insight. And... Ugh. Kodak Shredder. Yo. All right. We're getting them set up. I don't think we mill the land. I don't There's so many decisions. There's so many. Do we mill the land there? Is there a chance they only have two lands? How do you even know at this point? <laughs> I play Mono Red uh, Boss Lie Prowess. I've done a match under five minutes because I didn't sideboard. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the... Oh no. Oh, we needed that. Well, um. Okay, so mill ourselves. <laughs> Zach just had like a million small decisions, and those small decisions end up adding up to bigger decisions and wins and losses i know you said some cards you'd be okay with unbanning in modern but what are your top five cards that should never be unbanned in modern Ooh, uh that's a that is a good one um so cards that i think should never be unbanned in modern well, there's a void mirror um huh glimmer void Talisman. Void Mirror. We don't really want to just randomly mill, I don't think. And pass the turn. So cards that I would not want to see unbanned. 
I actually did a, a whole article on tier ranking the modern ban list not long ago. The cards that I had at the very bottom, uh, cards that were recently banned, the Okos of the world, um, I, I think... I think that uh, if I had to rank the just the bottom the bottom five, number one would be the fast mana stuff. I think the format, the the free spells we already have in the format, I think are problematic. I don't want to see more fast mana, especially if like Simeon Spirit Guide is off limits. Stuff like Chromox uh, is just like clearly going to be uh, going to make the format too fast. So we already had like Simeon Spirit Guide, a really bad fast mana spell. Uh, breaking things with like cascade spells. I imagine that having good, having good, um, hmm, having good fast mana would be even more problematic. Well, all right. I don't know what we do about this. I feel like we're just dying here, but Pixis, Kodak Shredder, uh, Pixis, Urza Saga. Boom, hand is empty, take that Omneth. So that would be one. The fast mana stuff, uh, like Chromox. Um Ivugan. Ivugan, I think, would also also be very low on my list of cards that I would be okay with being unbanned in the format. Uh Mental Mistap, <laughs> Gitaxian Probe, the the free the free uh Frexy mana spells. And then I think Skull Clamp has to be up there too. Cloud Post, I'm like a little more in the middle on. I think for me, Cloud Post is is a tier better. So if those cards are like D tier, don't even think about unbanning them. I'd put Cloud Post to like C tier. I think there's some weird world where like, let's say they printed Wasteland into Modern, which doesn't seem 100% impossible with all the reprints we're getting. So let's say they ended up putting Wasteland into Modern. Then maybe I could see a conversation about it. Dark Depths, I think, is also non, non-starter. non And also just, um, yeah, Oko's, the stuff that has been banned in, like, the last year, like the overpowered 2019-2020 cards, those, I think, are not even worth, like, Astrolab, um... Astrolabs, Uros, Mystic Sanctuaries, Okos, Field of the Deads. Those are cards that were rightly banned, and I don't even think there's a reason to consider unbanning them. <laughs> At the time, when they ban actually when they banned when they banned Ayavugan, I actually wanted them to ban Oh Hagek for Yeah, Hagek for sure. Oh my god. After playing that unbanned modern event that they did at Moto when we did that stream. And just seeing, like, how insanely dominant. I don't think that just randomly milling is normally good with this deck. But I think it might be worth it in a deck that cares about the amount of <laughs> the amount of mountains in their deck. So I kind of feel like there's some value just to, like, milling and hoping that we can get enough mountains out of the deck that they can't actually scape shift us. Fire of Industry. Well, all right. Urza Saga, Spire of Industry, pass the turn. We are filling the graveyard for the Ren, so I guess that's still like a little silly, but yeah, Hagek is. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh, KCI. KCI, I think, should be banned. Uh, KCI was too good, and it was also, and it was also just too. It took way too long. Yeah, Urza Saga's busted. Do you think there's any... Okay, so chat, they said today... We talked about this at the very beginning of the stream, but there's more of you here now. Oh, I know, we're playing... A, it's a it's a retro Thursday. Um, <laughs> Dermotaxi's a very fig saga. Did you see the, the fade Dermotaxi deck? I really wanted it to win more than it did, but it's still... It's cool when it works. We played a holy... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. This deck does not play leagues very quickly. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Well, hmm. Make a big construct. Mail you. Mail you. <laughs> Randomly milling. So, so they announced that Thursday we're getting banning. So they banned stuff in Popper today, but they announced that I said Thursday, Tuesday, next Tuesday. Uh, so like five days, they're banning stuff in other formats. They didn't say what formats, what is, 
what is your what is your thoughts? Or there's going to be a BNR update. I don't think they specifically said banning. So who knows? Maybe it's unbannings. That's technically a possibility. But you have any any predictions on what it might be? I want Bridge back. Just got the whole deck built, and then Hagek and Bridge got banned. Got to play the deck once. Felt really bad. Ugh. I I can definitely feel your pain. Although Hagek was like historically broken. Uh, so it's hard for me to feel too bad about Hot Gat getting banned because it had to go. It was like, it was ruining, it was ruining, ruining, ruining the format. Honestly, I actually did a Legacy League this week. It's going to be coming up on the YouTube next week. And I had heard all these horror stories. There were so many people that were saying, that were saying like, oh, the format needs bannings. It's really, really bad. And I don't doubt these people because they play Legacy way more than I do, but my league was actually like super fun, like shockingly fun. Played five different, five different decks. D didn't run into Delver a million times or anything like that. So it was uh, actually surprising how good Legacy felt. I mean, isn't Urza Saga busted? <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's this. What we're seeing right here is almost an argument for banning it. Like it's a land. <laughs> it made two ten tens, and it tutored out a pithy needle to shut down you know, the second best card on our opponent's battlefield. Like, it is it is an absolutely, ridiculously absurd card. Also, oh my goodness. I don't know if any of you saw this. Did any of you see a... Did any of you... Oh, the bad news from today was that the new unset's getting pushed back. Uh, I guess because of... Because of COVID-related uh, delays. So the new unset's apparently not coming out April 1st. Did any of you happen to see a, are we dead? Escape shift. <sighs> yeah. Well, okay. We have one hope that is to mill all of our opponent's mountains. <laughs> I don't know if there's very good odds of this happening, but <laughs> it's the only hope we got. Exile, that's a mountain. Chalice of the Void. Oh, that's a blowout. But did any of you happen to see a a, a hypothetical non-acorn leak from, from the set? I think you'd remember it if you did. Um I'm curious. I, I had someone I had someone send me a uh a a leak card on Twitter that was from a I guess apparently from the unset. Wow, they had enough. They, um, and I wasn't sure if it was a real thing or not. Or a, they said that they had seen it back in December or something. It was uh, it was very strange. Yeah, Urza Saga is super busted. But I was trying to figure out if it was an actual like real thing. All right, not enough mountains. Somehow miracles, miracles happen. <laughs> Please. Oh. Miracles do happen. We did it. Our random milling plan worked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa. It worked. <laughs> well, I guess I'm glad we we randomly fired off all those Pixies of Pandemonium activations. Uh, can you see what's under Pixis? You can't. They exile face down. And even when the game ends, apparently, they don't seem to flip back up. But I think we we must have just exiled enough mountains that our opponent couldn't win. <laughs> well, that's not how you're supposed to play a lantern. Like, in, I think in general, in most matchups, the, the rule of playing lantern is you shouldn't mill blindly. Um, because you could be exiling your important pieces with like Pixis. You could be filling your opponent's graveyard with stuff that's beneficial. So I think in general, you don't want to do that, but I think in that matchup, it makes sense. <laughs> All right. We are, we're, uh, slowly working towards feeding the kids. <laughs> is Dark Depths really more broken than Urza Saga? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, Urza Saga is broken. But, oh, it's going to take a lot of milling to get through a Yarion deck. Well, we're going to keep it. Um, Urza Saga is... Hey, see ya, Pesky. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Urza Saga is busted. No doubt busted. However, Dark Taps is... Wow, it is incredibly, incredibly busted. Um, hmm. 
<laughs> How do we want to do this? All right, let's thought seize for information. Oh God, Thalia. Oh God, Skyclave. Oh no. Okay. Well, that's a handful of cards that we can't easily beat. Um, well, I'll take the Thalia, I guess, because that's the first one we can't beat. We have a new donation from Drice. Uh, you deserve that for winning two super tough matchups with this version of Lantern. Well, thank you, Drice. I appreciate the five dollar donation. And yeah, I don't know how I don't know how he managed to uh to win that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of problems here. Many, many, many problems. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> New problem added. Wow, this might be this might be a quick one. Sort of fire in ice. Land, maybe? Okay, we did draw the land. <clears throat> so many problems. <laughs> so many problems. Um Oh well thank you, Majora. Oh boy, what do we do here? <clears throat> okay, so here's here's our problem list. Stoneforge, I don't think is our biggest problem. I think our biggest problem is Skyclave is gonna snag any of our good stuff. Imperial Recruiter is gonna find more Skyclaves or something even more brutal. If this has gotten like Calder complete, then I think we'd have to immediately answer it. But I don't actually know that we have to immediately answer. Oh, I don't think we have to immediately answer Stoneforge yet. I think. I'm leaning towards develop our mana, Pithy Needle the Ether, ether Vial, because kind of what we need to have happen here is we kind of need our opponent to be like, eh, I might as well Skyclave the Pithy Needle and like unlock my Vial or something. I think that that's, <laughs> I think that that's what we need because we're going to need this Ensnaring Bridge to stick. Opponent does get a giver of runes, which I guess means now we're never going to kill the Stoneforge, but about it. I love Lantern Control so much, even though Urza Saga is a silly card. Happy to see it exist again. Yeah, Urza Saga definitely is super helpful uh, to this deck for sure. Like, I think it is the reason it exists again. About it. Hey, what's up, Mike? How are you? Good to see ya. <laughs> Looks like you're playing a richer deck. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we know why they didn't tutor up the Calder complete. Wow, we just... Didn't we Thought Seize them? Wait. So that means that was their draw last turn? That's unfortunate. <laughs> ha! Hard to... I guess maybe we should have known that? Uh, hmm. Well, uh, now our plan is... Okay, wow, this is going to be tough. So I think what we have to do is... Try to keep our opponent from ever drawing another land. That is our, our one. Oh my God, that's a land. Um, Okay, that's not great. We need our opponent to never draw another land. If they get the Skyclave, we lose. Oh. oh no. Oh no. They're playing Rip Apart in the main deck. Oh dear. <laughs> hey, what's up, Doug? How are you? Wow, that's a new one. Uh, normally, Rip Apart is not is not played in the main deck um, in any modern deck, but yeah, that's <laughs> this is just like a list of cards that our deck cannot beat. <laughs> Your opponent does not want to lose a lantern. <laughs> Rip Apart, Skyclave, opponent has it all. Are they going to Rip Apart? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that just that does it. All right. Kiki's. Well, I'm glad we saw the Kiki. I don't know what our opponent's doing. Opponent is on a wild pile. I mean, Rip Apart is good. Usually, usually you see a braid over it, but Rip Apart is strong. Well, uh, Torpor Orb it is. M both Torpor Orbs. Uh, Fatal Push, maybe? Oh, I can't believe they drew that Calder complete. Not a not a Landred fan, uh, Craven. I mean, I don't blame you. Landred could be a not the most fun archetype to play against. I I definitely. I mean, I actually I don't know. I when it was one of the most played decks in the format, there were times when it got pretty old. On the other hand, I actually think it's like 
trying to play against Lantern is really interesting. Because it, it, playing against Lantern makes you value stuff that you wouldn't really value in any other matchup. It's like about holding your fetch lands so you can try to manipulate the top of your deck or holding things that can draw you a card so you can draw so you can draw what your opponent uh, is trying to mill out of your deck. So I actually think it's like kind of interesting to play against once in a while. If you had to play against it like half the time, uh, that that probably wouldn't be all that enjoyable. I think it's one of those decks that it's a really sweet like tier three deck but when it becomes a tier one deck uh people get miserable playing against it oh chat i got a question for you. this came up on twitter <laughs> My, our opponent just uh just typed in the chat i don't know if you can see this you can probably see this uh so hey uh, sorry i played against this deck yesterday my deck is very ready to beat it we, we, we kind of, we kind of already realized that those ri So now we know why there's rip aparts in the main deck. <laughs> uh, opponent, opponent is, uh, is prepared for the lanterning. Uh, this, this might be, this might be bad. <laughs> um, all right. So... I mean, the needles are okay. The bridges are necessary. Fatal pushes, maybe? Wait, uh, get rid of the Graph Diggers cage, I think. Let's let's try it like that. Okay, so here's the, here's a question, chat. Um, so, counter spells came up. First, number one, here's what brought it up on social media, was I was thinking about counter spells, and... I came to the conclusion that I think we should get more soft white counter spells. Uh, I'm talking like, uh, you know, the, the, the mana, the mana tithe, not literal mana tithe, but maybe like sensor, maybe sensor should have been a white card or a uh, Juari refuge, whatever, stuff like that, that white should get more soft counter spells. Um, so that, that's number one. Do you think that white should get more soft counter spells? Mana League, they won't even get blue Mana League. I don't think that white should get counters that are better than blue counters. I think that blue should still be number one in counters. Um, so I, I would be surprised if we though this Torpor is going to be sweet. Um, I'd be surprised. So many lanterns. I'd be surprised if we saw white get like a Mana League just because blue doesn't even get it. But, but yeah, I think more like narrow or soft counters. The other question is, so once I brought this up and we started talking about it, one of the things that people said was, hmm, one of the things people said was, are we playing Torpor Orb? Probably. Uh, one of the things they said is, people hate counters. People hate counters. I don't think that we want more counters, period, because, oh no, hmm, this might actually change our plans. Uh, I don't think we want to deal with this <laughs> Magus of the Moon. Uh, so rather than Torpor Orb, we're going to mill the mill the Magus, I think. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Another one. Oh, we can't catch a break in this matchup. <laughs> oh, Magic Gods. Why, Magic Gods? <laughs> Why are there two of them in a row in your 80 card Yarian deck? Dan Wildfire. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Opponent apologize in chat for this. Well, uh, yeah, I guess we might as well sag one of these. Welcome to the fishbowl. I mean, are we just are we just dead? Are we just literally already dead? Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then they're going to follow it up with Magus that we couldn't mill. And then they got a Stoneforge that we... Oh, this is so incredibly bad. Um, all right. So pay one for Lantern. Actually, you know what? We don't need the Lantern. Uh, no. We'll pay the one for Kodak Shredder. We'll draw the land... We'll play the land. We'll collect a brutality. Get rid of the Kataki. 
Wow, our opponent was not kidding when they said they were ready for this matchup. Dan Wildfire with a $2 donation. My wife finally got to play the Decameter for Christmas. Orzo of Angels with, uh, Angels with Lisa. Jeez, um. Uh, with Lisa uh, as its commander, her first game ever, we played the deck. Uh, her first game ever playing the deck, the Is It Turns player killed himself trying to dig for answers. Oh, that uh, that sounds sweet. I'm glad it's uh, I'm glad it is working out. Well, all right. That yeah, sounds like a Lisa has a card that's really, really impressed me in Standard. Cool to see it being played in Commander. I've never seen it in Commander, but that sounds really sweet, Doug. Uh, Soul Flare, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the question is. Oh. All right, so we need to find we need to find bridge. That is the next step to this maybe working. Fatal push isn't good. Okay. Opponent passes. If we could cast fatal push, it would be good, but we have a lot of mountains at the moment. Oh, that's also not good. Cards are getting stuck in hand. Also not good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is a miserable matchup. So the so the other question was, um, okay, so to go back. So one of the things people said was, well, people hate counters. So we can't have white get counters because, or more counters, because everyone hates counters. Or many people hate counters. New players hate counters. More casual players hate counters. Counters are bad, basically. My question was, do you think that's true? Do you, do a lot of players actually hate counters? Or do or do players hate playing against like Drago control decks that want to counter all your stuff? Cause that's kind of like that's kind of what I think it actually is. Like and maybe Oh yeah, Arizo Saga just dies. This is so bad. Yeah, we're super dead. Well, that was a quick one. Um, so so do players actually just hate counters existing, period? Or do you hate or is it that people hate when they run into the deck that's just like counter your thing, counter your thing, stick it to fairy, untap my lands, counter your thing, and you just never get to do anything? Um because I think my perception is maybe it's actually the latter. Like maybe people who think they hate counters actually dislike playing against like the drago counter every single thing you do decks because when i think of counters like i feel like counters have a ton of upsides like that's the main reason i'd like to see more white counters is like when i think of counters when i think of like drago control i think oh that's gonna you know suck for my brew because i'm gonna get crushed because <laughs> i don't have the cards to beat it uh but when i think about just counters I think of oh yeah that was that was tough fast master you you were definitely prepared for what our deck was trying to do um but when I think about counters in general I think about like a stopping Elrond's epiphany stopping emergent ultimatum like I view counters existing as like a really good important healthy necessary thing rather than a, a hugely negative thing. Um, I think from a spiky perspective, Drago control is fun. Like if I'm playing a top tier deck and trying to, you know, be competitive or whatever, then I don't mind playing against Drago control. I think it actually can be interesting, but I certainly can see why a lot of new players and casual players would, would not like it. Yeah. You, you definitely have a lot of hate for, uh, for our archetype fat master. Like when I saw that riff apart, <laughs> kind of made my jaw drop because that was game one and that's not a card that you usually see in main deck so yeah you were you were super ready so that's kind of my thinking Miro cites her own internal research i mean honestly <laughs> i mean i love i love my rosewater but um I don't normally trust wizards when it comes to anything involving data. <laughs> like the wizard's reputation when it comes to data is just not very positive for me. So, so wizard saying, "Oh, our data shows this or that." Like, I just automatically take it with a with a grain of salt. Not that it's I don't think that it's lying usually. Um, I think it's more that if you have data that's not public and no one else can see it, you can kind of make that data say whatever you want it to. Like you can, 
you can yeah if it's public and you, everyone can see it and uh, you know in, independently verify it that's a little bit different but if no one else can see it it's really easy to to use the stats to support whatever argument you want to make uh all right what are we what are we doing with this hand hmm <sighs> discard discard bridge no combo pieces. I think we got a mulligan that. Hmm. Discard, discard, Kodak Shredder. Hey, hello from the US, Sambo. How are you? You don't trust companies to willingly provide you with data that could be used to or constructed to make them more money. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Ha. Huh. I don't know if we should keep this even. Like, do we keep this? What well, formats are going to get bans next week? So I think there will be alchemy updates. Uh, there's got to be. Um, so I think alchemy will get changed. I would say... Huh. Next most likely... Jeez, that's really, 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 really tough. Hmm. Yeah. We don't... I guess we do have the blue mana. I guess that's not the end of the world. Yeah, we'll we'll try it. Um so put a concealed courtyard to the bottom. So I think we just like Uh oh, Chef of Dunes. Esper Sentinel. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes things worse. More lands. Oh, Blooming Marsh Go. Yeah, so that's presentable and the play's gonna be bad. Gonna be bad. Um, now I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, other formats for bannings. It's really, really tricky because I think there's uh, Legacy, Modern, and in Standard all have, all have pretty solid arguments for potentially being the format that gets bans. I don't know what to make of it. I feel like Legacy is a format that is had the most had the most complaints about it. Inquisition, pay the one. Oh, okay, Calder complete. Uh, well, play a welding jar. Pass the turn. Oh, okay, so we can take the Calder complete. We're gonna need to find some combo pieces. That, please, not more clocks. Oh jeez, what a wow. Oh, oh that's that's an insanely brutal top deck without this is played out. Yeah, that's incredibly bad for us. We draw even more lands. Hmm. Yeah, I think we might just be dead now. Like that's really, really, really bad. Bumbles, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, what's uh what's the matter with your friend, Magikarp? I didn't uh I didn't know your friend wasn't doing well. I'm sorry to hear that. Ophidian, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, oh, Thalia too. Ay, 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 ay. About it. Field of Ruin goes to combat. So we're gonna need a bridge pretty soon for any of this to matter. Oh, Thalia was so brutal. Abonant. I mean, I think there's arguments for Monkey. Monkey and uh, Saga to potentially be banned. We gotta have a basic, right? Okay. Um, we do. Grab a basic. Well, mill ourselves. Untap. Urza Saga. Well, play the Saga. Very, very slow Saga. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, past the turn. Oh, not looking good. Not looking good. 
Yeah, I really miss Simeon Spirit Guide. Uh, DB MTG, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like there's just a few cards that are above everything else. I'm not even sure that it's decks that are that are above everything else, but I feel like the power level of like Saga and Ragavan and and maybe the the Cascade decks are just like really 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 high there's certain archetypes of cards like you have urza saga decks you have ragamon decks and then i guess i would say the other the other tier would be <laughs> maybe the cascade archetype but i think the those are the two uh the two big ones like if you look at just like the meta game i'm gonna get in for a bunch we take a few billion down to eight opponent Please, no more threats. Okay, mill ourselves. Kodak Shredder. We really need to stop drawing Lant. <laughs> wow, this has been just like as bad as a draw can go for this deck. Well, we will pass the turn, try to take up Urza Saga. Although these Giver of Runes are going to be a problem. Well, I mean, we're getting to the Bridger Bust. Opponent attacks. Well, we will make Urza Saga token. Opponent gives it protection. Does not give it protection. Interesting. Well, we will block your Thalia. Huh. If they did that earlier, we would have taken damage, right? I think... PB, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soups here for you. The pri uh, the signed Crucible of Spirit Rank is my most prized MTG card. Thanks for everything you do. Well, PB, thank you for the for the kind words. I'm glad you are enjoying it. But if you look at we'll look at the meta in a minute. Batter skull? Maybe. My opponent is playing this incredibly strangely. If you have these cards, why aren't you? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why they aren't hitting us for damage. Like, if you have protection, you have solitude. I don't know why you do it in that order, but we'll mill ourselves. Inquisition. Bridge. Oh my god, even more lands! Okay. The biggest amount of lands in the history of magic. Make a dork. Tutor out. Codex Shredder. I think, I mean, I think uh, we need the bridge. We need the bridge. We have one, maybe two turns to find it. What is our best way to find the bridge? So we can either use Lantern of Insight so we know what we're milling. Or we can just get another Kodak Shredder so we can mill more often and then try to get it back with Academy Ruins. Those are the those are the two plans. So if we get Kodak Shredder, we see more cards, right? Yeah, I think we just gotta take more. We just need as much milling as possible. So take the Kodak Shredder. Play the Academy Ruins. So we mill ourselves four times, basically. We mill ourselves a total of four times. If we hit a bridge, then we're kind of-ish in the game, even though we've drawn so many lands that we're not especially close to being empty-handed. Opponent. I don't think our opponent knows we're dead on board. The way our opponent's played this, I don't really have much... Uh, I don't think our opponent knows that. <laughs> if they do, then they got us, but... The way our opponent played that last turn, I do not think they know that they could potentially win with the Deserts. Uh, opponent gets in with the Thalia. Well, looking like we might be correct. <laughs> opponent. Must have drawn. Okay, Batter Skull. Well, mill ourselves. Prismatic Ending. Mill ourselves. Bridge. Academy, get back the bridge. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you got to play your opponent. <laughs> it's 
Sometimes. All right, so Inventor's Fair. Ensnaring Bridge. Pay the one. And Thought Seize. Take, hmm, I guess the giver. Drop to nine past the turd. Oh, I think we're getting there. Hey, yellow at. Thank you for the raid. We are, uh, <laughs> we are grinding out some wins in modern with a. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> wow. No luck. We got no luck. I'm on it. Wow, that's in that is insanely unfortunate. Okay. Well, um, <sighs> our opponent is <laughs> literally doing everything in their power to uh, let us win this game, just the way they're playing this, and <laughs> their top of their deck is strong enough that <laughs> it might it might be overcoming the way that they're playing. <laughs> the problem is it's exiled, so we can't get it back, so now we gotta hope we... One, two, three, four. Now we gotta hope we luck into milling it again. And we have one less Cappy to find. No. No. Go up to 10. Prismatic ending doesn't actually do anything because of the giver of runes. Hmm. Man, Fender's Fair is too much. Too much mana. Hey, what's up, Eddie G? Like, we don't have enough mana to Inventor's Fair and play Bridge. Yeah, I mean, exile the A Giver and pay the one. I mean, at some point, they're just going to make us die. One, 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 two. Uh, hmm. Is our opponent going to realize they can kill us? Bears, uh, bears around here somewhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, play the land past the turn. Sooner or later, they're going to realize they can kill us. Well, we can't ending the batter skull because they can just give it protection with the giver of runes. So that's that's kind of the issue there. I mean, sooner or later, our opponent's going to possibly figure out that they can kill us. They just said sorry in chat. Okay. <laughs> Our opponent is running so, so well, but the decisions they're making are like kind of mind blowing. Like, weren't we just said if they just literally swung that time? I don't even think they needed to use their lands. Like, if they just swung their entire team, we we're dead, right? Like, there, there wasn't even anything 
Yeah, I, I, I am too. That this is. I mean, I'm not trying to bash our opponent. They might, they're probably new to the deck or the format, but wow, those are the like missing the land. I do that all the time. This one uh, confused me a little bit more though, because I think if they just clicked attack all, we were we were super dead. But we're not gonna complain. We're not gonna complain. <laughs> We will not get if they top deck another bridge answer. I am gonna complain. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're playing around the settle. <laughs> hey, what's up, Magic God? What a weird match. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, all right, so one, two, three, and if they top deck another answer, to this I swear. We even have welding jar, so it's basically got to be a skyclave apparition effect. Pay the one. get the bridge ah i forgot to codex shredder there too we should have um prismatic ending giver of runes sure i'm guessing our opponents just uh just maybe new to modern learning learning some of this i mean if you're someone i expect there's gonna be a lot of new players in uh in modern i mean i guess it's also possible that they're <laughs> they're watching the stream and just trolling us okay stoneforge hey barby what are you doing barby you want to say hi to everyone you want to come say hi come here here come say hi come here come here baby come here can you get up and say hi say hi to everybody look there you go. Say hi, big boy. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> hey, big boy. Everyone's saying. Everybody's saying hi, bear. Can you say hi? Can you say hi back? That's that's the microphone talking to the mic. Or eat it. Are you gonna eat the mic? You gonna eat the mic, big boy? <laughs> oh. All right. You can you can go go back to sleep. That's okay. I'll take you out after we finish the stream, okay? We gotta finish lanterning. <laughs> oh, I, I I talk to him, I talk to him all the time, like uh, like he's a he's a person, and I know he does not understand anything that I'm saying to him, but <sighs> oh, he is a cutie. Slub skewed. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what we need now is a lantern. Because the way we lose this game, the way we lose this game is our opponent finding another, another Skyclave. Uh, probably play some Pauper at some point, now that, uh, <laughs> this has been such a funny match. Probably play some Pauper at some point, now that there's been the new bannings. Uh, Bear is a, is a Rottweiler. Gonna be a big boy. Hmm. All right, keep milling ourselves. Ghoul Caller's Bell. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we could Kodak Shredder to get back Urza Saga. That's a really slow way to get to a lantern, though. Maybe, maybe too slow. Uh, this match is zero zero. We're we're three and or two and one overall in the league. Zero zero in this match. We're trying to find a lantern. We need to find a lantern of insight so we can make sure our opponent doesn't draw another skyclave apparition, and that that should essentially lock up the game. Uh, is it worth? Is it worth cracking a codex? I guess we can see what we draw. Just with the way our opponent's been running, I'm really worried they're going to top deck the whammy. Collective Brutality. Hmm. Now we're going to do this the very roundabout way. Kodak Shredder. Get back. Inventor's Fair. 
Play the inventor's fair. Collective brutality. Kill the giver. Pay the one. All right, well, if they don't draw it this turn, we get to start lanterning a bit at least. All right, past turn. <laughs> Oh, no whammies. Yeah, we're gonna have to play faster too. Ugh, opponent, come on. Tell me you didn't top deck it. All right, just uh, just a cave of the frost dragon. Opponent passes. So we, hmm, untap, draw, gain a life. I mean, I think we hopefully should be good unless we get a little unlucky. Now we want to get a couple more mill rocks, and then we should really be good. We should... Oh, man. We should have been dead so many turns ago. <laughs> this is one of the weirder weirder badges we play. Oh, I thought this is bad. Uh, all right. One, two, three, four. Inventor's Fair. Crack it. Get Lantern of Insight. Play Lantern of Insight. Pay the one. So opponent can draw all the creatures, all the equipment, all the lands that they want. Just not anything that answers our ensnaring bridge. Solitude's fine. Thought sees. Got to keep our hand empty. Get the cauldra. All right. Sure. Draw your solitude. Well, I mean, I think we win this. Now we just got to not time out. That is the, that is the next challenge. But I think I was saying, uh, I think we're going to see an influx of an influx of uh, new new players checking out modern uh, and in moto formats. So uh, it which is something I'm excited for. I definitely don't want to be definitely don't want to be too critical of people who are learning the format because I want as many people as possible to to join the format because it is it is just a really, really fun way to play magic. Uh, all right, Academy Ruins, get back a Kodak Shredder. Draw the Kodak Shredder. Now we're just racing the clock. This is a race against the clock. Kodak Shredder, pay the one. Pass the turn. Pony can draw Thought Knot. That's not a problem. All right. Well, we got to play fast. We got to play really fast. Modern is in a great place right now. Yeah, I think uh, MH2 has brought in new people, and then... There's also been people who have been leaving leaving uh, Arena for Magic Online. Uh, mill. Yeah, we're going to risk it. Mill, mill. Solitude. Sure. Um, yeah, we'll draw the Pixis. Play the Pixis. Pay the one. Now the only question is, can we do this before we time out? <laughs> That's the only way this goes wrong. All right. Pass the turn. Pony's got 36 cards. Stop paying. Yeah. <clears throat> it's risky because if they ever draw into an answer to the bridge, we're in serious trouble. Uh, mill you. Mill you. Uh, well, there's a Skyclave. Get rid of that. Esper Sentinel's fine. Get back. A Kodak Shredder. All right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to look at chat a super lot right now. We're gonna time out, so I'm gonna try to focus on winning this as fast as possible. So if you got a good question, I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, Minka Carjay? If you got a good question, just hold it, because <laughs> I promise. I as soon as we finish this mat, this game, I will. I will catch up on it. Oh, but it would be a shame if we did all this and then lost to timing out. Actually, I don't know if I want them to draw that. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with more triggers. Reality Smasher, yes, you may draw that. Opponent. Untaps, passing. Well, Mill your Thalia. Mill your Thalia. Exile your Stoneforge. Get back a Kodak Shredder. Untap. I mean, our opponent is locked, but I don't think they're going to scoop. Uh, so, Kodak Shredder, pay the one. Past the turn. I mean, we're about to pull ahead on cards. We're milling a decent chunk each turn. Opponent's going to draw the land that's fine. Opponent's on the time plan, I think. If 
opponent passes. Well, exile. Skyclave. Good to get rid of that. Millet. 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 So opponent's just like a taxes deck, I guess. Um, Get back. Ghoul Caller's Bell for more milling. Draw Ghoul Caller's Bell. Play Ghoul Caller's Bell. <laughs> Opponent has a land on top, which is fine. Play the Ghoul Caller's Bell. Pay the one. Pass the turn. I mean, we're going to win it. The question is, are we going to win it with enough time left to be able to finish the match? Yeah, the problem is not paying the one. I mean, I guess there's a way we could maybe not pay the one. We just got to be careful about not drawing them into an answer, which is the only thing I'm really scared of. Mill, 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 exile. I guess we could have kept another bridge. I mean, we're so close to just closing this out. Mill, 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 mill. Stoneforge on top. Sure. We draw Pris. Oh, we really don't want Prismatic ending. Uh, mill. Exile. A little bit risky here. Lantern's fine. Giver's fine. Play the lantern, pay the wood. Are we going to be able to win the next match, though, is the problem. Opponent's got 12 cards. They're drawing a giver of roots. We pass the dirt. We're going to win in two more turns. Are we going to have enough time? Are we going to have enough time to finish off this win? Opponent. Thought not seer. I mean, so I think the problem is the amount of time that it would take to think through the right decision when it comes to if we should let our opponent draw a card, I think would make our odds of winning less than if we, if we just do the fast thing of like, leave a land on top, click, 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 no, rather than being like, okay, what's on top? What could they draw into? Do we have enough mills left? So I think to like, just for the sake of time, even though you're right, there are times we could let our opponent draw a card. Um, I think for the sake of time, we're better off not not having to think about it. Because our main challenge here isn't winning the game. It's not running out of time next game. All right, opponent, library empty, pass the turn. And the way our opponent's played, uh, I don't expect them to concede. So F6, 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 we got there. Six minutes, 37 seconds. Whoo! Opponent, upkeep, draw, wow. Okay, well, we we had zero business winning that game. Zero business, zero business at all winning that game. None whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, that, that was kind of a freebie. It might work out for our opponent in the end because so much time went off the clock, but there's, there, there's no, no way we should have won that game. None whatsoever. Yeah, our opponent just started F6-ing. Yeah, this is match four. Game two. The oh, time is going to be a problem. Okay, so what's our... If I miss anything, chat, I'm, I'm looking at chat now. So what is our strategy going into this game? Like, try to get a good hand. And if our hand isn't good, scoop aggressively for game three, I think. That's probably... That's probably our best bet. Other other possibility would be just to just to pick up a a fast win with Urza Saga tokens. I don't know how easy that's gonna be. <sighs> I mean, I think we can win on the mill plan if we really focus on it. Yeah, that was game one. I mean, Saga Saga is definitely definitely uh an option for potentially winning quickly. I think we want Torpor Orbs. Like, Torpor Orbs Spellskite? Yeah, Apparition and then Sideboard Cards are mostly what we're worried about. Lantern Control. Ooh, Saltai Lantern. Interesting. Drown in the Lock does seem kind of cool. That is a really powerful effect, and it does work really well in a mill deck. I like that. That's a that's a neat, a neat build of it. And the Karn plan. 
Uh, hey, Seth, I've been feeling like I'm falling out of magic recently because I don't play as much or research decks anymore. I don't really want to quit because of how much the game means to me. Any advice to get back to it? Well, Horatio, I think that's a, I think that's normal. And I think that taking breaks sometimes and feeling more or less interested in the game at various times, like, I think that's all like super, super, super normal. Uh, so first off, don't feel like you're, you're alone. I think that's how, how most people interact with the things that they love. Um, Uh, as far as how to get back into it, uh, it probably depends a little bit on what you were, what you were doing, uh, doing before. Um, maybe try a different format. Maybe go back to uh, what, what initially made you love playing magic. Like if you've been playing spiky arena, like grind up the ladder, maybe, you know, play some, play some commander or kitchen table stuff or uh, whatever. So there's lots of, lots of options. Oh no. Okay. Sounds a little slower than we were hoping because we can't play these glimmer voids. That's actually a lot slower than we were hoping. Opponent gets a waste, passes. We draw. Bridge is good while well, Spire of Industry go. Opponent taps. What do you say, chat? Like, have you ever found yourself falling, uh, falling away from the game or falling out of love with the game? And what was... What was your technique for getting back into it? <clears throat> this isn't good. Not good at all. Torpor Orb. Yes, this is this is sketchy because it means we're going to start getting hit by Calder Completes. Starting now. Uh, Torpor Orb is good, though. Torpor Orb does shut down a lot of our opponent's answers. And we do have a, a bridge if we can get to it. Opponent. Yeah, here comes a Cauldra. That's a lot of damage. Opponent going to hit us. Sure, down to 15. Talisman. I'll play the land. Play Talisman. Inquisition you. Ugh. All right, Sanctum Prelate. Ancient Stirrings. Take Lantern and pass the turn. Sorry if I miss anything in chat. Oh, I promise. Hey, what's up, uh, Holland and Grober? And good to good to have you. We are we are on the clock at the moment. What does our opponent guess with the prelate though? One. Okay. Opponent goes attacking, hits us down to nine. Passes. We will collective brutality two modes. Kill drain. Discard a bridge. Play lantern of insight. Play. Uh, fatal push. Pestered. All right. Well, here it is. This is it. We can get down the bridge to stop the germ. Opponent cracks. Can we win in time? Oh, my God. This is going to be ridiculously close. Opponent. Uh, okay. Batter skull. Yeah. All right. All right. This is it. Opponent gets and hits us. Sure. Down to five. The race is on. How quickly can we win? We will play a ensnaring bridge. We will play a ghoul caller's bell. We're going to let our opponent play the Thalia, I think, because we want this Kodak Shredder. And then, okay, the race is on. All right, I can't I can't really look at the chat this game. Opponent, Esper Sentinel, sure. Opponent, silent clearing. That's a redraw in the future that we got to be aware of. They don't have an answer in hand. All right. Thalia, yep. About it. Passes. So we just need more mill rocks. So we need to mill a lot of cards really quickly. Oh my god. I don't know if we knew this in time. Uh, One, two. Play Kodak Shredder. 
pass the turn. Opponent. Shevadun's on top, draws a Sentinel. All right. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? I'm not sure. Plays as per Sentinel. Okay. Mill. And Mill. Untap. Play the Spell's Guide. Uh, spell's guide. That is more protection. Pixis on top isn't bad. Spell's Guide down. Pass the turn. Oh, I wish there was a way we could F6 more, more aggressively. Opponent. Temple on top. 41 cards in 4 minutes 53 seconds is a lot. All right. Uh, mill you. Are kind of a myriad. That's fine. Untap. <laughs> Pixis. Pay the one. We might have to stop paying the one at some point. Pass the turn. Does this matter? Not really. Sure. Opponent plays the Archon. Well, uh, Exile. Mill. Exile, or Mill. Oh, that's a Skyclave, okay. Opponent draws it. All right. I mean, we have the spell skite, so this doesn't just beat us. Although our aggressive milling there was not the best. Past the turn. Opponent. Oh no! Oh yes, it doesn't work. That's right. We got. Oh, that's right. Protected by the torpor orb. Oh, that's right. None of this matters. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. Okay. I don't know what I was so scared of. Mill you. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm kind of an idiot. Mill you. Can we do it in time? Oh, yeah. It's going to be... It should be very hard for us to lose. Oh, I, I totally forgot that. <laughs> I just totally forgot that we had the Torpor Orb. Bone of Asses. We draw land, which is fine. We play the land. We pass the turn. 31 cards. We've pulled ahead on cards. We still got... I think we're going to get this. I think we're actually going to get there somehow. About it. Sure. As per Sentinel. Passing. Opponent. Archon number two. He Well, picks this. Ghoul Caller's Bell. Mill you. We don't really want to draw this. Untap. Get rid of the Clag to Brutality. Ancient Stirrings. Mill? All right. Needle, I guess, is fine. Needle. Pay the one. I mean, I think we're going to do it. Um... I'm sorry. If you're saying things to me, I apologize. I just, I, I we can't time out. We got to try not to time out. Save it up. Save it up for after we finish this game. We're close. We're actually close to, to winning this. Opponent untaps. Draws a solitude, which is fine. Skyclave. The Torpor Orb is saving our day at the moment. Opponent. Passing. Well, mill you. Another Thalia, untap. Inquisition. We will not pay the one. Um, take the Skyclave. Uh, pass the turn. About it untaps. We're good. We're good. We got it. We're going to be good. We, uh, do we need the upkeep stop? I guess we got to keep it. About it. Basing. Exile. One's going to field of ruin. Sure. T 
Two minutes, 50 seconds. That's plenty of time. Puno's only got 21 cards in their deck. Exile. Mill. Mill. 17 cards. We untap. Two minutes and 40 seconds. We play the concealed courtyard. We pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Oh, I can't believe we're going to end up winning this with the amount of time that we had. Opponent adapts. Oh my god, we can't let him draw a Kataki. No, 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 no. That would be a bad one. Uh, Thalion number two. Legend rolls. Opponent passes. Definitely exiling this Kataki. We want no piece of that. Exile that forever. Uh, mill both. Mill our opponent. Untap. Ancient stirrings. Do not pay the one. You can have your cave. We will take Inventor's Fair, I think. Yeah, Inventor's Fair. Play the Inventor's Fair. Pass the tur two minutes. Oh, we, we got it. We got it. We got it. Pwn's only got 12 cards. They only got 12 cards. Unless I've messed something up in, with what's in their hand without realizing it, I think we're good. Opponent plays the land. I, I can see how this deck can be frustrating to play against. Opponent, Solitude. Yes to Lifelinker. Opponent's passing. Well, okay. Exile. M oh, another Kataki. Um, mill. Mill. Aldrazi Temple on tap. Untap. Inventor's Fair gain a life. Draw Prismatic Ending. Cast it. We will not pay the one. Pass the turn. Seven cards. Oh my goodness, we're gonna win this. I cannot believe we I cannot believe we won it. I mean I think our opponent's new to the format. Um based on how this matches went. So I don't blame our opponent for not scooping. I think a more experienced player would would maybe have realized that they're they're dead, but I, I don't blame our opponent at all. Shevet Dunes, pumps the dorks, sure, sure, sure. Still can't attack. Well, okay, exile. Unless we mess something up right at the end, we are somehow gonna win this match. Mill actually we win right now, don't we? We just empty the empty the library. Gain a life. Exile. Draw another bridge. Might as well. Mill. Can we actually get a win? This is kind of funny. Mill. We can force our opponent to draw, right? <laughs> This is I've never killed someone with their own with their own Esper Sentinel. <laughs> we killed them with their own Esper. I've never done that before. I'm pretty sure that is I'm pretty sure that's the first. <laughs> wow. Alright, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back. Alright, so whoever in game one said stop uh stop paying for the Esper Sentinel. I uh I think you were correct. Uh, that definitely sped up the process. And you know what that means? Bears uh Bears eating tonight. Bears eating and we're three and one. We still got another game to go, but we're three and one. That is a uh, at least a little snack for the bear with lantern control, winning 2015 style on hard mode. <laughs> Wow, that's the that is the second game we've had, or second match we've had, where we won with under one minute on the clock. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was, I feel a little bad. I'm still sticking with, I think our opponent's new to the format. New, new to, new to modern, probably. The first game we played was one of the weirder games I've ever played in a modern league. Seriously, like, uh, literally mind-blowing. Some of the, <laughs> just how that whole thing went was so weird. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, the, the five-hour stream dream might be dying. 
It looks like it looks like we might be around around three hours for the league. Definitely like the deck feels pretty good. Although if you want to play quick games, probably not the deck for. Ooh, this sounds great. This is this is all you can ask for. Thoughtseize, Lantern, a mill rock. Uh, that is that's all we want. Yeah, we we have ruined it for for our poor opponent forever, <laughs> and they never played modern again. I hope not. Ha! Uh, I do like I do like playing miserable decks though. I mean, I'm sure you you know that about me, but I I feel like it's because I really firmly believe in like niceness and kindness in uh in real life. So so magic is my that's my place I get to be mean. That's my that's my time where I get to blood moon people and not feel bad about it. <laughs> Cause it's just a game. It's just a game. So I can I can justify playing Lantern Control or playing <laughs> or playing a uh, turn one Blood Moon decks or whatever and enjoying it. Oh, all right. Well, hmm. Okay. Huh. Yagmoth combo. What does Chris kill? Creature or Planeswalker? So as ticks up, Mills. Maybe we just don't even care about Grist. Don't really care about Young Will. So I guess... I guess we take Court of Call. The problem with Grist, I guess, is... It is going to allow our opponent to change the top of their deck. I mean, we do have a bridge. Yeah, opponent's Richarding. Got the Strangler Geist action. I mean, I'm not super worried about Strangle Root Geist, or I'm not really worried about any of the creatures, just because we got the Ensnaring Bridge. So my thing is, we take Cord of Calling. I think we take Cord. Uh, so our answer to Grist is we do have Pithing Needles, but I feel like Grist can just do its thing for a while, and we don't really care. And eventually, we'll find a find a Pithing Needle. Oh, let me, I'll look at a minute, Archburg. I think we take Court of Calling and then just try to get the lock set up next turn and try to keep them off of getting combo pieces. I mean, and they can also Court for like Yagmoth. Yeah. All right. Court of Calling. Go. Big Brain Humans. Ooh. <laughs> that looks, uh,. That looks spicy, Arch Burglar Lord. I like the the mess with Nexus plan. That uh, it's kind of like a, a tribal tribal looking deck. Turn everything into humans that aren't humans. That uh, that looks super fun. Yeah, it's gotta be gotta be cord. All right, opponent untaps a verdant catacombs. Gonna play a birds because now unless they just drew something brutal last turn, which we don't have any way of knowing about. Like hopefully we can just keep them off their combo pieces and then use bridge to stop the creatures and we're good. Oh, all right, we're gonna lantern of insight. Oh, that's actually a problem, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Do we have to keep, do we have to mill? Oh yeah, that looks that looks super fun. Do we have to mill? <laughs> do we have to mill ignoble hierarch so we don't die to birds of paradise? <laughs> I almost feel like we have to mill this ignoble hierarch. <laughs> oh, did you see a modern loot tree build is by doing okay? Oh, I saw like a tweet or something. Yeah, it feels so weird, but I actually think we have to. The, our pony has two birds. And this this allows our opponent to attack through our ensnaring bridge. So I actually, as painful as this is, oh dear. Okay, well, we're gonna need a lot of pithing needles, and we're gonna need them soon. Uh, so there's a Yagmoth and a Gris coming. Ay ay ay. I still think that was a correct. I, I mean, I still think it was what we needed to do. Uh, it didn't actually work out exactly the way we hoped, but. I still think that was the the line we needed to take. All right, so we untap, we draw land, another lantern. Now play the land. Tally's men. Ancient strings for 
Mm, nothing helpful. Uh, well, Codex Shredder. Play the Codex Shredder. Oh, yeah. So we got to find... Our opponent's very close to going infinite. Very, very close to going infinite. We gotta find Pithy Needle, like, this turn. I mean, Grist Ultimate, I guess, could kill us eventually. Like, in a very long time. I mean, because it uh, damage is equal to the number of creatures in their graveyard. And right now, that's one. So, it's gonna take them a while to actually get a... A lethal amount of creatures. Oh, I guess we could find a Thought Seize. So, Thought Seize or... Thought Seize or Needle is what we're looking for. Those are the two cards we really need here. All right, so... Mill ourselves. Land. No. Mill ourselves. Thought Seize. Yes. Untap. Draw the Thought Seize. Okay. Thought Seize you. Take the Yagmoth. This buys us a ton of time. Ensnaring Bridge. So now our opponent can't attack. Grist is not dealing a ton of damage. And now we have time to find... To find an answer for the Grist. Find a needle for the Grist. Make sure our opponent never draws anything good. And that... That should be how we can win the game. Blood Artist. Okay. Opponent's going to run out there. I, I think we... I think that's what we needed. We found what we needed. That's also the fun of playing this deck. Is like... Oh, it, it, you have this tension of like... Oh man, can I find it? Am I not going to find it? If I do find it, I'm going to win. If I don't... Um, I mean, Needle's better, right? Because it's just drains. Like Now what we're mostly worried of, uh, about losing to is... This just draining us? Do we want another Kodak Shredder? And do we care about Blood Artists? Those are, those are the two questions of the day. So our opponent's hand is what? A land? A land and a Strangle Root Geist? Oh, it's super, it's super close. Hey, good game, uh, JG. Hmm. Millie also gets him closer. Well, does Blood Artists even matter? I'm not sure Blood Artist matters. Like, if they can't Yagmoth, if they Yagmoth, they're going to beat us either way. If they don't have Yagmoth, what are they going to, what are they going to do to trigger Blood Artist? Hmm. Well, yeah, we'll mill it to be safe. Well, we got to mill Cord. Okay, Blooming Marsh is fine. So we'll just draw the Kodak Shredder. All the Kodak Shredders. I mean, right now their Grist is still just three past the turn. Birds of Paradise. Opponents drawn lands and birds. Mills tokens. I mean, we are going to have to find it eventually, though. Like, sooner or later, the Grist is going to matter. Opponent passes. Well, uh, mill ourselves. Mill ourselves. There's the needle. I think that's the last piece. Well, now we'll see. Like, I think this should just be game now. Pithing Needle Grist. And now it should be impossible for our opponent to win unless we punt. Opponent untaps. Ooh, okay, are we going to get a 4-1? I feel like we might end up with a 4-1. Opponent, Young Wolf. Sure. Opponent. Help me, you. Uh, yeah, we don't want them to have anything that can find or tutor up uh, Yagmoth. At least until we find another Pithing Needle. If we find another Pithing Needle, then we don't really care. All right, play the Banner Rock, pass the turn, Pota draws Dryad Arbor, that's fine. I mean, this should just be game. Like, I, I don't think our opponent can win now. Opponent. I mean, I guess the thing is, it's not 100% deterministic because, I mean, we could punt, we could get super unlucky and have our opponent have, like, a million good cards in a row on the top of their deck, but it's very, very likely that we win now. 
All right, you can have the overgrown tomb. We draw inventor's fair. I mean, lantern actually feels pretty good. <laughs> it actually feels relatively competitive. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we find one more needle, maybe that makes our opponent scoop. Overgrown tomb. Uh, well, mill the Yagmoth, you can have that. Mill the Collective Brutality, we don't really want that. Meh. Yeah, I guess we mill Young Wolf. Wallards is fine. Untap. Inventor's Fair. I mean, I guess we can. One, two. Yeah, we'll do it next turn. Let's just play the let's just play the lantern. So I guess during our opponent's turn, we'll just inventors fair up the pithing needle and put it on Yogmoth, and maybe that just gets our opponent to scoop. Like that's layers and layers of protection about it. <laughs> I mean, it's feeling it's feeling pretty competitive. I would say. Well, milling Yogmoth. And then just in case, oh wait, we got to, <laughs> almost punted. <laughs> Don't want to do this till after combat. All right, now we can grab the other needle with Inventor's Fair. Yeah, we have not run into many conceding opponents. So grab Pithing Needle, untap, draw the land is fine. Needle. I mean, maybe all of our opponents are hoping for the timeout wins. All right, so needle on everything. I mean, we can't lose now. There's there's no way. There's no way. About it. Yeah, auto yielding to Inventor's Fair does make a lot of sense. It should be pretty fast from here on out. I think we can close this one out pretty quickly. Uh, Mill, you. There's not a whole lot that we're worried about from our opponent's deck anymore. Aga Bottom would actually be good. Ignoble. Oh, we got to mill that, don't we? All right. Yep. Well, who knows? Maybe we can get unlucky still. It's not impossible. Okay. Forest. That is a good one. Expedition map. Go. Opponent draws the forest. Boy, it's so hilarious because, like... <laughs> The, now, the whole point of this deck is just keep your opponent from doing anything, and it actually does a pretty good job of it. Wall of Roots. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, I, I like playing with and against it, actually. Well, if I'm playing, like, a, a legitimate deck, I, I like playing against it. Uh, I don't like playing against it if I'm playing, like, a budget deck or something. That's much, much, much less fun. Oh, Eldritch Evolution... That's fine. We got a we have a ton of mills left. So we're gonna roll the pixels. Get another mill going. Play it. I mean, we've just kept our opponent from drawing any relevant magic the gathering cards. Wall of Roots. Actually, wait, did we play a land? We didn't play a land. Let's uh Expedition Map, Urza Saga. Go. Opponent. Wall of Roots, another Yagmoth. Yeah, I mean I guess I guess getting, getting I mean they're super dead now though. Like I don't know how much more dead our opponent needs to be. I think our opponent is just hoping that we play slow in timeout because I think our opponent is like determin deterministically dead right now. Mill mill mill. Well, can't we have the court of calling? Uh, welding jar drawn. I don't know if our opponent even has any Yagmas left. Mill. Sure, keep your strangle root guys past the turn. Thirteen cards in the deck. Yeah, the the deck. I actually find it really fun to play. <laughs> and it, it's been it's been successful tonight too somehow i wasn't sure going into it i hadn't played it this is the first games we played with it but yeah we'll probably just to like double triple quadruple seal the deal when our when our saga goes off i don't i mean i don't even think we really need to do this but when our saga goes off i think we're gonna just get a i guess a graph diggers cage 
so we draw another saga. We, I mean, we don't even care about, we don't even care about making constructs. We don't do anything. Get the graph diggers gauge, play another saga. Kind of don't want our opponent to draw the peat land. Like that is actually, actually a good land. Mill you. Strangle root guys. That is, that is fine. Richard would not approve if we, if we didn't, uh, if we milled the, the strangle root. We can't do that to Richard. All right, about it. Untap. Straws. See, Richard thinks strangle root guys is good. I feel like this is a pretty good, a pretty good example of why strangle root guys is not good. Look, he's got four, four strangle root guys to our boat has, and uh, not even close to killing us. Not even a little. Uh, mill you. Mill you. I mean, this is just game, right? Five. Oh, do we need one more turn? I think we need one more turn. Untap, prismatic ending. Yeah, one, one more turn. Saga triggers. Prismatic ending, get it out of our hand, kill whatever. Pass the turd. Opponent's got four cards. Actually, wait, one, two, three. Oh, we do have enough. One, two. Oh, we got exactly, exactsies. Two, three, four. And you are go, opponent. <laughs> yeah, it is, you were, you were right, Naz. Hey, what's up, Naz, how are you? Oh, okay. One more, one more, and we got the four one with lantern of all things. <laughs> I I think I think we got a shot. I think we got a shot. Um, we had Simeon Spear Guide Band. Lantern Control could be your new favorite deck. I do enjoy playing Lantern Control. Utilize F six better. You're probably you're probably uh you're probably correct that uh, I could do more with that. Uh, the only thing, so this is a deck that I won't play on stream a lot, just because the whole reason I love streaming is because we get to interact a lot, and I hopefully we've still been interacting a decent amount, but it is a it is a uh, a tough deck to interact as much as I like to, just because just because of the time issue. The time issue ends up being the the problem. What about Torpor Orb? Does Torpor Orb stop this? Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause... Oh, actually, no, wait. That probably combos with... I don't even know. No, I don't think that does anything. All right, whatever. Actually, well, it probably should sound like a Rex Age. They may have Rex Ages. Would you play a Lantern and Paper? Oh, I'd have to get... I'd probably have to get used to it. What are the odds of Thursday's stream next week given spoilers? So I think... Here's my here's my new current plan for spoilers. When they there's like one stream every set where they uh, it, uh, release a bunch of spoilers. So my plan for next Thursday is when Wizards is doing the spoilers, I'm gonna be live and we're gonna watch the Wizard stream and kind of talk about the spoilers and uh, like host it and whatever, talk about it as as they're showing off the cards. Uh, whether or not we get to do much gameplay or whether I'm going to have to run off and do a spoiler video will probably depend on how many cards I show. I'm guessing that we'll probably like watch the spoiler stream, discuss the spoiler stream together, and then I'll probably have to run off and do a spoiler video for YouTube. So I think that's what the, that's what the Thursday stream will be is, uh, is kind of us live talking about the spoilers and then rather than, so it'll be shorter than normal, but we'll still have a stream. Uh, Monorif, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we should, hmm. Definitely should sideboard. Definitely should be sideboarding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh God! All right. Well, probably should have sideboarded slightly faster. 
Uh, the problem is watching me the video, a big chunk of it is, like, just the editing part, which is not very entertaining, I don't think. Um, like, uh, watching recording... So the video process is, like, doing the artwork, the slideshow type stuff, which is really dull. It's just me, like, thinking and not even really... I don't know what it would look like on screen. The recording of the video would probably be pretty interesting. Because uh, it would just be like watching the spoiler video, but probably would be messing more stuff up that gets edited out <laughs> afterwards. Uh, and then the editing of the video and like exporting and uploading would probably be pretty boring. But uh, I, I, maybe there's a way we could do it. It might it might be possible. But yeah, so I think that's the plan. It should be try something different for the spoiler season because now that we're only doing two streams on a regular basis, I really don't want to miss like a, one stream a set because of spoilers if I can help it. But the best but I also really need to do the spoiler video cuz like the first day of spoilers is like one of the most popular videos. Uh, so I don't think I can not do the spoiler video. So, so the best I can come up with is we hang out during the stream, talk about the spoilers, and then I do the spoiler video. So a little bit, of, a little bit of both, basically. You should do a reaction video of you doing spoilers, and then we can watch the reaction video. Uh, will you ever do a Legacy League playing tier decks? Um, would you like that? I will. I, I can say that I have a Legacy League. I have a legacy league that's uh that's done. It's already already done. Wow. <laughs> you know, let's go for this. Oh I was hoping they wouldn't crack and we might jank them out by naming the fetch land, but well, I mean, I think the needle's gotta go on Yagmoth, right? Yagmoth is the thing that kills us the most. <laughs> tell tell wizards to reschedule. <laughs> I will I will let them know that I do not approve of their spoiler schedule. Oh, also, um, another thing I was thinking of. Let me know what you think about this because y'all y'all are the people who are here every Thursday. Um, how would moving the Thursday stream up an hour impact your? Ability and enjoyment of the stream. Uh, so right now we start at 6 p.m. Eastern time. With the spoiler thing, I would kind of like to start at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it would make it easy. Instead of coming in halfway through like the Watsi stream, it would mean on days when Watsi has a stream with spoilers or something, we'd start and be able to watch the entire thing. Um, but I wanted to see what it... The main reason uh, that I hadn't done it earlier is the... It interferes with Commander Clash recording, but I think we're going to record at a slightly different time next season. So that would make it would make it possible to actually. Oh my god! Uh, well, we probably don't want them drawing Force of Vigor. Yagmoth will have to deal, or Yavmai will have to deal with so many Strangle Roots about it at taps. So yeah, we'll see. Nothing, nothing is changing. I figured, if anything, it probably is helpful for European viewers a little. I mean, I know it's still going to be <laughs> late, but it's slightly less late. But I was mostly worried about, like, West Coast viewers. If people on the West Coast would be like, oh, no, I'm still at work or whatever. But, uh, so we might, we might do that uh, starting in a couple of weeks. We'll see. Next week will probably start early. I should say that. Next week will probably start early no matter what, just so we can actually watch the whole Watsy stream together. So plan on that. When the Watsy stream is going live, if you want to hang out with me and talk about it, come here instead of the Watsy stream, and we'll just uh, watch the Watsy stream together and talk about the spoilers and whatnot. Hmm. I wish I knew what was in our opponent's hand. And I wish I knew what to name with Necromantia. So we untap. Well, play. Oh, so what's okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, ten minutes. Okay. All right, I gotta, I gotta look at this real quick. Also, if you pick up this deck, knowing what's in your opponent's deck is really important. Uh, I'm probably biased, but. MTGGoldfish.com is a pretty good place to look up to look up deck lists. Huh. Outland Liberator. Force of Vigor. 
I guess endurance could actually be annoying. Uh, cord. Well, necromancy, you. I have no idea what to name here. <clears throat> if we knew what was in our opponent's hand, it would be easier. Okay, they did have a cord in hand. Okay. Okay, that's actually huge. Getting rid of the cord means that they can't cord up the Outland Liberator. So in their deck, they have a Force of Vigor. A Force of Vigor that gets out from under this. We got the Yagma set locked out. Or actually, wait, and two Crime Punishments. All right. Well, sure. So get rid of the cords. Lands in a Dralf's Messenger. Yep. Yagmoth is okay. We have Yagmoth. We're not going to mill the Yagmoth. Opponent can draw the Yagmoth. We have the Pithy Needle, and they don't have many answers. Sure. Yagmoth away, friend. Yeah, we're. Probably going to have to mill Endurances just so we can actually mill them out before we time out. <laughs> All right, so the hand is the hand is nothing. Nothing to be afraid of. So we just got to be be careful at the top of the deck. We'd like to find another mill rock. That would be like the... That's the next thing we want from our deck is to be able to mill multiple cards a turn. Because with just one mill a turn, uh, there's going to be situations where our opponent is able to draw something that we don't want them to. And when you're playing something like Lantern, even one draw that you don't want your opponent to draw can be the difference between winning and losing. Dipped out early during the community stream. Are you planning on doing a MTGO community today? Would love to play any of the turtle formats. Uh, yes, it's not in the schedule yet, Naz. It won't be till after Kamigawa spoilers, but a, a Moto community day is, is going to be happening. Uh, we are going to start milling ourselves, but I think we got to mill this Endurance first. I'm afraid if we don't mill the Endurance, they're going to use it to shuffle their library back in, and and it's just going to take us too long to win. Eldritch Evolution. Uh-oh. Uh, huh. Okay. The Waller Roots, that's, that's fine. We can deal with the Waller Roots. Oh, I draw Glimmer Void. They do have a fetch land, so our opponent does potentially have a draw here. Um, one, two, three, Ensnaring Bridge. And then Prismatic ending a token. Oh, this is a this is a huge shuffle of a fetch land. Like this is potentially the game, depending on what our opponent hits. I assume they're gonna crack the fetch and try to hit something better than Waller Roots. Shuffles. They don't have that many hits. Okay, Forest. Oh, that's that is that is lovely. Thank you, Magic Gods. Okay, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. AC, Yuchen, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Steve Chip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who about it. Yagmoth? Sure. We have a needle on that, so that's fine. Opponent's passing. Stringer Geist. We don't really mind our opponent drawing that. We just want more mill rocks. Thoughtsies we don't want. Ancient Stirrings. Finds Kodak Shredder. Glimmer Void. This actually feels like it might be a pretty a pretty good matchup. Alright, two mill rocks. Pass the turt. And I think we're in very, very good shape here. Opponent. Not gonna crack the fetch. Nope. Alright. Draws a strangle root, guys. Sure.
Here off some messengers us down to nine, but they need a lot of those to win. Um, hmm. Codex Shredder ourselves. Codex Shredder ourselves. Ancient Stirrings is not bad. Draw the Stirrings. Cast it. Well, all right, Pithy Needle. Oh, there's a Pixis. That's nice. Pithy Needle on Nurturing Peatland. Pass the turn. Oh yeah, we got we got Yog needled. That was a that was our first step was was uh, needling Yog. And now we got the card draw land shut down. We got the Pixis coming. I mean, we we're pretty close to having this locked in. I think the Peat land's more important than the Catacombs actually, but yeah, hitting one of the lands is is very good. Uh, Ignoble Hierarch we actually still have to mill because that gets their bridge. Young Wolf, we don't have to mill. All right. All right. Looking good. Looking. Ooh, there's a Saga, too. Well, Pixis, go. Enjoy your Young Wolf. And this is where it's... This is where it's pretty much over. Force of Vigor, well, you're not going to draw that. Young Wolf, sure. Opponent's passing. Exile. Uh, X. Actually, let's mill ourselves. Mill ourselves. Unfit Barret! Welcome to the fishbowl. Graph Digger's Cage actually isn't bad either. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Graph Digger's Cage. Play it. Another layer of protection. Pass the turd. Well, now we just got to mill him out before we time out. We're good. We're good. We're good. Opponent. Draws the birds. That's fine. Catacombs, we are probably going to mill. Plays the birds. We would like to get this Pixis, though. Well, mill you. Now we're just trying to get the, the deck empty. Mill you. Birds on top. Sure. Pixis. Play it. Pass the turn. Enjoy your birds. We got to keep the upkeep stop, I think, because... Yeah, we lost to... We literally lost to someone that was playing Red White Taxes, who said in the chat, I lost to Lantern yesterday, and I didn't want to lose to it again. And they were just incredibly overloaded on hate. Like, Skyclaves, Rip Apart in the main decks, Katakis. Like, it was literally a deck that felt... <laughs> built to not lose to our deck <laughs> and uh and it worked for our opponent they did not lose to our deck uh eldritch evolution we can't let you draw that cannot let you draw the eldritch evolution i'll play the inventor's fair mill actually wait we have a we have a graph digger's cage i'm an idiot we can let you draw that well, opponent also is not realizing we have a Graph Digger's Cage, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Opponent, we got him to use their fetch land. That's a, that's a win. <laughs> Pass the turn. I think we're playing at a pace that, that is fine for winning. I think we're good. I think we're good on time. Yeah, me and my opponent, I think we both forgot that, uh, <laughs> that we had, uh, <laughs> that we had Cage. That was like, did you watch Commander Clash last week where I accidentally countered the wrong... <laughs> Oh, uh, someone cast a fairy protection, and I, I countered the... Oh, so I cast a, a mass land destruction spell. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and someone tried to peace out with the fairy's protection. It was Phil. So I, I tried to counter the Teferi's protection, but I misclicked and countered my own cleansing meditation that was going to blow everything up. And... <laughs> didn't say anything about it and phil didn't realize it and uh <laughs> encountered back encountered back and saved me from what would have been the most embarrassing pun <laughs> i mean i still punted but the the impact was not that bad because of uh phil countering back and our opponent is not going to give up are they opponent does not seem like they're gonna give up well mill you 
21. I mean, the countdown's on now. Opponent doesn't have that many cards. Oh, yeah, we're going to... Let's exile. Exile Augur. Actually, well, oh, yeah. Exile, oh, my God, okay. Uh, Get rid of the crime punishment. Untap. We get a ghoul caller spell, which is nice. We gain a life. We play... Ghoul Caller's Bell. We got to get rid of the Hierarch. Blooming Marshes. It is. Being on the other side of the table is so brutal. It's so, so brutal when, when you're in this lock and you just, you sometimes you feel like you can't scoop because, oh, what if they whiff, you know, seven times in a row? But you're also super, super, super dead. Pona's going to send a bird's message. Yep. Uh, definitely watch tomorrow's Commander Clash. I really think I would rank it in the the top three episodes all time of the series, and it's just it's so good. It's just such a such an awesome such an awesome set of games. Um, mill mill mill, twelve cards, untap, gain a life, draw a pithing needle, play a pithing needle. Name Vernon Catacombs, I guess. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Could have we? We could really pithing it our own pithing needle here, and it wouldn't wouldn't really make a difference. Abonent, untap. Everything about adapting troll worship for the modern meta. Um, maybe adding Stoneblade or Saga package cards like Sterling Grove and Endling with Solitude. Sterling Grove has me intrigue. Uh, meta. That's one of I love the troll worship deck. It was so good when we first played it. Opponent is really trying to tap us out, aren't they? It was so good when we first played it, but then worship started dying too much, so it got a less, uh, lot less good. But getting the new, the new pieces from Modern Horizons two that can protect enchantments might actually make it worth trying again. So it might be time to to revisit. Now mill everything. Opponent's got five cards. I mean, gain a life. I mean, we just go for the win, right? Mill, 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 exile, exile. That's a big zero. That's a big zero. Thought sees. I mean, I guess that just makes sure. Yeah, all lands, no cards. In the library, past the turn, and Barbie's definitely eating tonight. Oh, we got the far one with lantern. The deck, I mean, that was that's a lot of treasure chests. Wow, the deck kind of crushed it. Like the deck really, way 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 better than I expected. Like I was thinking maybe we get a couple wins, but the deck actually kind of crushed it. And our one loss was to. Someone playing an anti-lantern deck, which I didn't even know was a thing because I didn't know lantern was a thing in 2022. So that was I'm pretty happy with that performance, and the deck performed really well. And oh my goodness, it's it is really interesting and fun to play. Drys 2020 with a two dollar donation. One more before the stream ends. I remember playing this deck in my LGS, and my opponent went Forest Forest Garrick's Companion. I felt so bad, absolutely wrecking the new player. I mean, really, is that much different than Forest Forest Strangle Root guys, which we just played, but. <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. All right, let's open and complete set. We got treasure chests. We got treasure chests to feed uh, to feed the kids, to feed the bear. All right, uh, five treasure chests. We could get a complete set. Who knows what we get? Oh, bear's, bear's going to be feasting tonight. All right, treasure chest number one. Oh, Polyraptor. Someone recently sent me a Polyraptor combo deck. I haven't emailed you back yet, but I saw the deck list, and I will email you back. Uh, not worth anything, though. Grackma. Also, has never really done anything. All right, four more. Come on. Complete set. Nourishing Shoal. Gray Shoal brand uh, Shoal. 35 play points isn't bad. That's like 315 play points. All right, three more to go. Something big. <laughs> what is this? Mephitic Ooze. Five mana, zero five. Gets plus one plus zero for each artifact. Whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature. That creature can't be regenerated. And it seems like a it seems like a mirrored and block card. <laughs> I've never I've never seen that card in play in any format. But I guess you could play it in an artifact deck in Commander. If you got a bunch of artifacts on the battlefield, it's gonna get some power. Kind of expensive though for zero power. Alright, come on. Come on. Two more. Oh 
Oh, that's the hit. That's the hit. That's the hit. That's a force of negation. That's a force of negation. Oh my god. Oh my god. Force of negation. Magic online. 52 54. Oh. Oh, that is that is one of the most expensive cards on Magic Online. Uh, like in the in the top ten, I think, of most expensive cards at the moment. So, oh, that is not quite a complete set, but that's pretty good. Also, a spell twine promo spell twine. Uh, not sure why I'm making sp promo spell twines because I've never played the original spell twine, but uh, sure. Well, uh, that is that is a good one. One more, come on. Force of negation number two. Force of negation number two. Yeah, Bear's getting a stake tonight. Inferno Titan is sweet. Bedeck Bedazzled. I thought that was an uncommon, but okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, we got a Force of Negation. Well, I think overall, I think overall this counts as a, this counts as a success. We ended up going, we ended up going, um, we ended up going four and one with Lantern, and we opened a Force of Negation. So we got to play some sweet modern jank. Uh, maybe not even jank anymore. Like maybe, maybe it's just actually a good deck. So. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think the next week, and it's cool to see Lantern make a return. I think we'll see if it's still a deck after uh, <laughs> after next uh, next week when they have the banning announcement. Because I do think that I don't know Urza Saga. I think would be on the short list of cards that could possibly get get, get banned in various formats. And if it did get banned, it would definitely be a a big deal for this deck, make it a lot worse. But on that note, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna run and go get Bear a feast. Gonna go, gonna go make Bear a steak or something in celebration of our league. So next stream is on Tuesday. Reminders on the no, we're not banning Blood Moon. Don't even, don't even joke about that. Don't even joke about that, Chef's Chest. Uh, reminders, replay YouTube. That's we can find all the old stream. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Rice. I'm glad we could play a deck that you really liked and uh, plays a botter tonight. Normal YouTube, more modern coming up on there tomorrow. Uh, playing some sinkholes with extra steps in modern. So uh, if you want some more modern action, check that out tons of other stuff coming up spoilers next week uh, and one more reminder that our sponsor tonight is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com even get a free mtd goldfish sticker just let them know you want one in your order notes most importantly thank you to each and every one of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and i appreciate you spending your night hanging out having some fun playing some modern so until tuesday everyone have a great night have an amazing weekend no matter what you're doing enjoy it love it have a great time and uh yep i love y'all i'll see you on tuesday and i will talk to you soon